Well, Thanksgiving seems a little bit different in Austin. As much as turkey or any other festive meat that you can cook up at a tailgate on Thanksgiving, this is the time of year when Texas is typically cooking up a run toward a championship. But tonight, Mac Brown enters horns up, needing one more win just to become bowl eligible and waiting as a visitor. Texas A&M rejuvenated by new quarterback Ryan Tannehill in hopes of gaining a share of the Big 12 South title and adding to the Horns misery. Hook them or gig them. You got to pick a side for a Lone Star showdown. Welcome to ESPN's College Football Primetime, served by Applebee's. Tonight, Texas rivalry as the Longhorns and Aggies get together for the 117th time in a quite a way to cap off what I hope has been a great Thanksgiving for you and your family. Glad that you're spending some time with us tonight as Texas tries to avoid finishing in last place in a conference for the first time in more than half a century. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer here. Jen Brown is down on the sidelines. She'll join us in just a little bit. For nine straight years, Texas has won at least 10 games. Craig, it really just seemed like a given. Roll the team out there, Texas was going to be very good. And perhaps it was that mentality that sort of has the horns flat this year and has lended itself to the state of shock they seem to feel about. So the, and Matt Brown's trying to forget everything that's happened this year and really to focus on tonight. He needs a win. He needs a win badly tonight because it makes them bowl eligible. He needs the additional practice time for the young players. He's got his quarterback, but he needs the talent around Garrett Gilbert to go out to be able to perform in the future. That's why it's so important to pick up a win tonight and will help take a lot of the sting away from some of those previous six losses. And you know, Jesse, it seemed at one point as we saw Texas getting ready to take the field, that A&M would be in pretty much the same boat. They were floundering at three and three, and they took a guy, Gerard Johnson, they built the entire offense around yeah. and benched him. This team was three and three in large part because of offensive turnovers. And head coach Mike Sherman made a gutsy move sitting Gerard Johnson, the school's all-time leading passer, in favor of Ryan Tannehill, a guy that had spent the majority of his first two and a half years playing wide receiver. In his first start against Texas Tech, Ryan Tannehill has set a school record for passing yardage, and he hasn't looked back since. This team is 4-0 full-time starter, including wins against Oklahoma and Nebraska. If Texas A&M wins here tonight and Oklahoma beats Oklahoma State this weekend, the Aggies have a chance of playing in the Big 12 championship game. It is a remote chance. They would have to wind up on top in the BCS standings. But hey, any kind of title, especially if you win it in Bevo's house, is something that the Aggies covet. Texas A&M and Texas coming up. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by the makers of Theraflu, Serious Power. Jared the Gallery of Jewelry with five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores. And the Capital One Cup. To learn more, go to CapitalOneCup.com. your worst flu symptoms. New Theraflu Max D contains the most powerful medicine allowable without a prescription to fight your worst flu symptoms. Theraflu Max D, serious power. Take the power of Theraflu in warming caplets or warming syrup. Good for 23 yards. Hey, you went to Jared. That's a peerless diamond. The ideal, ideal cut diamond. What? If you want to create your own one-of-a-kind ring, get to Jared this Friday through Monday because you can receive Get Set and Diamonds rewards up to $1,000 toward a beautiful diamond setting when you buy your diamond at Jared. Choose from thousands of diamonds and hundreds of settings. Get up to a $1,000 reward this Friday through Monday at Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. This is the Dr. Pepper Rivalry Series, unrivaled competition. 
Welcome back to Austin as you see Von Miller the defensive standout for A&M meeting with the Texas captains at midfield as we get set for the coin toss and the start of Texas and Texas A&M and we check in on the field with Jen Brown. Thanks Reese coach you talked to us yesterday about the inconsistency of your team this season and how much you've labored at trying to figure them out. What's your read on your team coming into tonight's game. Jen first let me say thank you to all the troops on Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody but we wouldn't be out here without our troops so God bless safe. I think they're going to play their tails off tonight. They're going to play hard. They're excited. They know we haven't had the season we won, but when they've played good together, we've been a good football team. Now, normally your team is contending for Big 12 and national titles. You know, what was your message to your team as you just try to stay and fight to be bowl eligible tonight? In the state of Texas, when you're playing the Aggies on national TV on Thanksgiving, and it's been that way for 100 years, nothing is better than this tonight. We're not looking past anything. I'm sure they're not either. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank Reese. All right, Jen, Mac Brown has his team fired up trying to finish on a positive note, and certainly Mike Sherman has done a brilliant job in turning his season around. The Aggies have ripped off five straight wins. Sherman in his third year as the Aggies head coach. Of course, you probably remember him from a very successful run as head coach of the Green Bay Packers. Spent six years in Green Bay, won three division titles, and put up big time, big time offensive numbers in the process. As you look at tonight's Dr. Pepper rivalry recap, the 117th meeting the Longhorns have a commanding edge all time and they've won eight of the last 10 meetings between the two including a 49 39 thriller last season as Gerard Johnson and Colt McCoy went head to head to put up huge numbers Texas wins the toss a defer A&M well received moving from right to left and it is a windy night here as you see Coriel Judy who's returned two kickoffs for a touchdown this season it's a windy, chilly night. The temperatures dropped very quickly over the course of the day. Wind right now, as you look at the flags, sort of blowing in the face of Texas right now, and their kickoff specialist, Justin Tucker, a 6'185 pound junior out of Austin. They'll hold it for Justin. And we're underway. Texas and Texas AM. It will be Judy. Royal Judy puts it on the ground and A&M recovers it right off the bat. Texas has had trouble recovering fumbles that they've put on the ground this year. That's a 33rd opponent's fumble. The Longhorns have only come up with eight of them. Uh, and one of the things about Judy is that he is an explosive player and explosive players try to make that extra second effort for the big play. You just got to cover it up. Coming in with a strip of the ball. They just can't get on it when it hits the carpet. An excellent strip of the football by Blake Gideon. You'll see Gideon all nine, one of the starting safeties, a three-year starter in his junior season. As Tannehill leads his team out, first play of the night will be a pass. Tannehill hit his tight end, Nehemiah Hicks, right in the hands, and Hicks can't hold on to it. It'll be second down and ten. Boy, Jesse, since Tannehill has taken over, this AM offense has been different. They haven't missed a beat, really. And Ryan Tannehill has a lot of the same skill sets as Gerard Johnson. He's mobile, can throw a deep pass. They haven't had to change a lot on offense, and that's why I think they've been able to flourish with Tannehill here in the second half of the season. Cyrus Gray. Gray first up close to the 35-yard line. Maybe knocked down about the 34. Eddie Jones on the stop for the Longhorns. It'll bring up third down. And Called very well. Third play from scrimmage last year. AM threw a 70 yard touchdown pass to Jeff Fuller. Yeah, we're seeing an up tempo offense now. This is what Tom Rossley and Mike Sherman want to do. They want to see if they can fatigue this Texas defense early on. Tannehill, first completion of the night, and he's got his man, Kendrick McNeil. McNeil in the Longhorn territory and knocked out of bounds. Curtis Brown there to stop him. Tannehill moves the chains. We'll see Will Muschamp on defense. The defensive coordinator for Texas tries to dial up an awkward look, but Tannehill, nice job getting through his progression, getting his playmaker the ball in space. You see the receiver able to make Blake Gideon the safety miss out in open field. A pickup of 32. Tannehill. Former wide receiver, Ryan. He's going to get down close to another first down. I think they're going to mark him just a bit short. Keenan Robinson, the Longhorns' leading tackler, stopped him. You know, you mentioned that he's a former wide receiver. The athleticism and the skill set of Tannehill is, is remarkable. 
Is that down, down on the play? I believe that's Emmanuel Acho, starting linebacker, one of two brothers on the starting defense for the Longhorns. Sam Acho, a stand-up. Both these guys have been spectacular this year. But Tannehill, that, that running ability that he has, he has not been running a lot, Jesse. You know, he's stayed in the pocket, and he's an extremely accurate, smart quarterback. Yeah, just because he's mobile doesn't mean he can't be a pocket passer, and he's big. At six foot four, he's able to look downfield find wide receivers over top of the offensive line. You see Sam Macho, the star defensive end. His brother, Emmanuel Acho, plays linebacker. And, of course, it's his brother who's down on the turf right now. You know, both of these young men have had great impact on the Texas program. As we were talking to Will Muschamp yesterday, one of the things that struck me was Will said, you know, I have two sons. He said, and if my two sons can grow up to be like Sam and Emmanuel Acho, I will have done something right. They certainly have made their impact felt on the field for this Longhorn defense this year, which has been put in some tough situations at times by the offense. It's good to see Emmanuel, 6'2", 240-pound junior out of Dallas, up and walking off. You just see him here on the right side of the screen, number 18 coming in. Looks like he maybe just gets his cleat stuck in the turf. He came into this game with a bit of a, a, a sore knee. And you hope there's nothing there with, with that same knee on that play. Talented guy, had 17 tackles against Oklahoma earlier this season. A player they can't afford to lose. Second is short. Cyrus Gray, first down Aggies. And getting close to the red zone, Curtis Brown on the stop. And we talk a lot about the difference in this offense with Ryan Tannehill at quarterback, but this guy right here, Cyrus Gray, has really picked up his game now in the last several weeks. In their five-game win streak, he's ran for over 100 yards each game, the first back at AM to do that since 1990. Ryan Swope. Plays receiver now, the former high school running back is dumped by Dustin Ernest for a loss. Yeah, this is a Will Muschamp defense, so they're smart. They're going to be in place. They haven't necessarily made plays in space. But when you look at Cyrus Gray, tonight you better be disciplined about what you're doing. And those five straight 100-yard games, he's taken over for Kristen Michael, who came out because of injury. So Gray is an excellent football player. Acho has returned, and Michael, by the way, suffered a broken leg against Texas Tech, and Gray's picked it up, both running and receiving. Cyrus has it out of the backfield. He gets back close to the original line of scrimmage. Several horns there, including Blake Gideon. Cyrus Gray set a career best. We had a combined 202 receiving yards and rushing yards in a big win last week against Nebraska, but he's a little bit beat up in this game. He's going to have to play very tough against a physical Texas defense tonight. Third and 11 for Tannehill. Blitz. Picked up beautifully. The throw to Swope in the end zone, and it's knocked away by Gideon. It'll be fourth down. Will Muschamp not sitting back, coming in the middle of the field. You're going to see a lot of the pressure that comes to the middle here. And once they do that, Cyrus Gray has to step up and does his job. Good coverage, though, back deep. Nice job by Blake Gideon coming in, trying to high point that, knock that away. And remember now, they're kicking into the wind. This is a big, gusting wind. And, and you need that they're averaging to the right side of that post. 38-yard attempt for Bullock is not close, and the Longhorn defense comes up with a stop. The wind in pregame was pushing the football from the left to the right, going that direction. Just didn't aim to start the football off. This isn't a country where plans made at nine necessarily apply at five. This is America, man. Home of the highway, last minute detours, and spontaneous acts of freedom. We're wanderers, wayfarers, even nomads. So doesn't it just make sense that we build an electric car that goes far, really far? Hi, I'm Reese Davis. This year, there's a new award for supremacy in college sports as schools, student athletes, and fans join the quest for ultimate bragging rights. The Capital One Cup will be awarded to the best Division I men's and women's athletics programs for their on-field performance throughout the year. 
schools will earn points based on their team's finishes in NCAA Division I championships and final official coaches' polls. The journey for the Capital One Cup begins this fall. To learn more, go to CapitalOneCup.com. After he refused to stop playing GoldenEye, Todd Wilson's wife ordered him to sleep on the couch in the basement. The basement where he kept GoldenEye. Well played, sir. GoldenEye, 9 out of 10 from IGN.com. Rated T. Tucker Alexander. He turned down an epic Hawaiian hot tub party for a multiplayer paintball tourney. Oozes before jacuzzis, as they say. GoldenEye, 9 out of 10 from IGN.com. Rated T. AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network, period. Monday, finally headed home, but it's been a rough one. First, your private time turned out to be not private. After that, you took the elevator to another level. But Monday means Monday night football, which will always give you the shirt off its back. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. At Bebo's end of the field, his defense just came up with a stop, forced a Texas A&M field goal attempt, which was missed. We are scoreless. Texas trying to become bowl eligible tonight, and it's been an uncharacteristic season for the Horns. UCLA ripped them at home. Red River rivalry that Texas stayed in and fought hard, but then followed it up by one of the most frustrating losses of Mac Brown's career at Texas to Iowa State. Controlled much of the Baylor game, but kicked field goals instead of scoring touchdowns, and then they were totally manhandled in Manhattan by Kansas State. Oklahoma State High Powered came in and ended a 12-year skid against the Longhorns, winning 33-18. All adds up to give Mac Brown what he has called his weirdest year of his career, certainly during his now in his 13th season at Texas. Garrett Gilbert to Fozzie Whitaker. Gilbert has his first completion of the night, and Fozzie will get up to about the 29-yard line, 28-29. Michael Hodges on the stop. Here is the young quarterback, Jesse, who was thrown into the fire against Alabama in the national championship game. Garrett Gilbert played his high school football here in Austin, where he only lost one game, won three state championships. He was the national player of the year, but all that could not prepare him for the pressures of being the starting quarterback at Texas. He's had a roller coaster ride in his true sophomore year. First pass completion to Whitaker picked up seven. Now on the run is Cody Johnson, the big fella. Gets it up just across the 30. Let's take a look at the impact players when Texas has it. Cody Johnson is a 250-pound running back, and Texas offensively wants to set up play action passing to get big chunks of yardage, but they got to get Cody Johnson going. And Von Miller, you know, seven and a half sacks in the last seven games. He is an impact player for sure. Flags flying is. Texas tried to sneak it for less than a yard on third down. And this is the type of thing that has really plagued the Longhorns this year, mistakes when they have opportunities. Especially on third down. This has been a problem area for them. Third down, and you see it all the time. Somebody tries to get up there offensively, and they try to hurry and make a mistake. Well, now instead of third and about a half yard, we're going to call it third and six. But they were, were inside one to go, and now it'll be on, on Gilbert to try to find a way to the Texas initial first down of the night. And Gary Gilbert played in that game against Alabama last year, and you, you expected some ups and downs in replacing the injured Colt McCoy, but this year hasn't been quite the stepping stone many had expected, though he has grown in some areas for sure. And he's very talented. He's good arm talent, as they say, and he fired a dart to James Kirkendall. He'll be very close to the first down mark. They're going to move it first down, Texas. Really nice job of Gilbert understanding he's under duress. Texas A&M bringing pressure on third down, getting the football out of his hands quickly. How about Kirkendall going down and making the catch? You know what, finishing a play on third down, that's something they have not done a lot of this year from their wide receivers, picking up the quarterbacks. The tight end set, Fozzie Whitaker is the running back. Gilbert. Right through the hands. He was looking for his tight end, the freshman Dominique Jones. 
We did the Aggies at Oklahoma State on a Thursday night early in the season. Really a tough loss for the Aggies. Look how much faster it appears to me. Faster AM's playing even in this game. Well, particularly on defense, this is a brand new scheme this year. They're playing a 3-4 under first-year defensive coordinator, Tim DeRuiter. And as the season's gone on, they've started understanding the scheme better. They've matured inside it. They understand how opposing offenses are trying to attack them. And when you play more confidently, you play faster. Aggies run a 3-4. They blitz often. They send it this time. Whitaker makes the first guy miss. Von Miller there. A little bit of help also from Trent Hunter. To get up to about the 35. To have a turnaround like they've had here at AM this early with Tim DeRuiter and that 3 4. Imagine what's going to happen when they recruit players that fit the system. They got a lot of guys coming back, but Tim DeRuiter told us when he got here, he expected this defense to be the best defense in the conference. And he didn't, wasn't anticipating there being any growing curve. And this defense has matured and gotten better as the year's gone on. Worse than 100 in the rankings and scoring defense in the top 35 this year. Pressure on Gilbert. He gets rid of it down the middle and he shorts hop, short hops it on third down. Horns will have to punt it away. Great example of what we're talking about there from this AM defense. Jesse, you mentioned 11 players flying around on each and every snap. You saw the pressure. They forced Gilbert into a bad throw. Well, uh, in. in this is something as a young quarterback for Garrett Gilbert, you learn to develop, to keep your eyes downfield, to feel comfortable moving and sliding in the pocket, to deliver accurate throws over the middle of the field. That's a ball that Gilbert wants back. There's Kendrick McNeil back to return the punt. He wears number 81 when he returns punts because his duplicate numbers with defensive back Corey L. Judy. McNeil had a big catch on the opening series, has some room. McNeil returns it out over the 30 and the Aggies will have pretty good field position for their second possession of the night. Each team has had the ball. Nobody scored yet in the state capital of Texas. We're scoreless in the first. Come see what's cooking at Applebee's. New flavor loaded steaks. We start with America's best selling flame grilled steak. Then we load it up with fresh ingredients and savory flavors like the Steakhouse Classic with Applebee's signature sauce. Best of all, they start at just $9.99. There's also our Bourbon Street Steak with blackened shrimp, the Napa Valley Cabernet and Portobello's, and more. Applebee's new flavor loaded steaks starting at $9.99. There's no place like the neighborhood. This holiday season, buy $50 in Applebee's gift cards and get a $10 bonus card free. The Shack makes you a holiday hero. Shop early and save. ESPN's College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Try Applebee's new flavor-loaded steaks. Come see what's cooking today. And in part by Chevrolet. Every model is backed by a 100,000-mile five-year powertrain limited warranty. You know, Austin, Texas is home to many small businesses like Threadgill. It's a great place where we had our crew Thanksgiving dinner last night. It gives us an opportunity to tell you in two days we'll have the first ever small business Saturday. Find yourself out doing a little shopping for the holidays on Saturday. Make it a point. Support your local small businesses. Log on to Facebook.com slash Small Business Saturday to learn more. 
Ryan Tannehill going up top looking for Fuller and he can't hook up. It'll be second down and ten. Second down and ten last year. Third play from scrimmage. Fuller caught a 70-yard touchdown pass. Now, how the season has gone for the Aggies. Texas A&M beat Kansas 45-10 to end three-game losing streak. But in that game, Ryan Tannehill played some, then set a record against Texas Tech. They came back to beat Oklahoma. They beat Nebraska last week. And here they are trying to finish the regular season at 9-3. and three. Tannehill running with it, and Ryan gets up close to a first down. I think he's going to have it on the zone read. Well, Ryan Tannehill, as you mentioned earlier, Reese, a former wide receiver. I want you to watch. I'm going to show you the end line. Watch happens as they collapse inside. And you do the zone read. You have to have responsibility here. And Tannehill sees that, and he is gone. 6'4", 220 pounds. He's not as big as Cam Newton, but he's not afraid to take on players in the second level. Wolf turns a corner. He's a former high school running back. He was running back at AM for a while before settling in a receiver over his shoulder and picked up another first down. You know, one big question I had coming into this game was how much did Texas AM have left in the tank emotionally? They had to get up for a big win against Oklahoma, then follow it up against Baylor, follow it up against Nebraska. You know, these big wins take a lot out of you, but they're flying around here tonight for their in state rival. Tannehill. Oh, it's batted into the air and unable to hang on was Uzuma Wachiku. Wachiku's had an ankle problem. We're not sure if he, were going, if he was going to be able to go tonight, but he's out there giving a shot. Will Muschamp told us he thought that Wachiku might be the most talented receiver. No, they have several. And the thing that you've noticed about the receivers at Texas A&M, they will go fight and challenge for the ball a number of them. Cyrus Gray. Are you getting down inside the 45 to the 44 and he closes in on Dante Hall for second place all time Texas A&M all purpose yards that's going to leave him about three yards short he's going to get that record tonight or at least get second place on the all time list. Third down Tannehill needs seven. Hit as he throws and was almost intercepted by Aaron Williams. It'll bring up a fourth down. This A&M offense, offensive line in particular, they have a starting left tackle that's a true freshman, a starting right tackle that's a true freshman. You get in a game like this with the emotions of it, and it's going to test. It's going to test those true freshmen. Because of Sam Ocho playing one defensive end spot, that means that Eddie Jones, the other defensive end, gets a lot of one-on-ones, and right there he was able to win around the outside to get the Tannehill. A&M's had a little injury problem at punter and Ken Wood, backup. Kicks it away to Adrian Phillips. Phillips crashed. Like his own man crashed into him as he caught it. Phillips did a great job hanging on to the football. No flags down, much to the dismay of the crowd here at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. Kenny Brown was down there. He was all tied up with a longhorn. Phillips held on to it, and Texas will have it at its own 12 when you come back. for Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. on ESPN. Are things different now that I'm not crushing quarterbacks every Sunday? Yeah, a little bit. But I still have a taste for greatness. So I love Dr. Pepper. The taste of these 23 flavors can never be equal. Like me. Pizza perfect nab. I got it. Donovan. Mike? What? Oh. Oh. Come on, Mike, man. Still got it. There's nothing like a pepper. Trust me, I've sent people to the doctor. Oh. Follow the drive to the national championship on ESPN College Football Final. You'll see all the big plays, the shocking upsets, and the great escapes that happen every week on the drive to the national championship. All season long on College Football Final. It's the holliest, jolliest, most magical event on television. Brilliant! Be there for the world premiere of Christmas Cupid. Merry Christmas. 25 Days of Christmas this December, only on ABC Family. Hi, I'm Howard Dvorkin, the founder of Consolidated Credit. For almost two decades, Consolidated Credit has helped millions of Americans just like you. 
We've helped nurses and doctors. We've helped police officers and firefighters. We've helped homemakers and home builders. We've helped over 5 million people suffering from credit card debt. And now we want to help you. Consolidated Credit is the one company you can trust. Our exclusive Freedom Quest program can help you find options and solutions to your financial challenges. We can reduce your monthly payments by up to 50%, consolidate your bills into one easy payment, save you thousands in interest and fees, and help you get out of debt fast. When credit card debt is the problem, we're the solution. We've helped over 5 million people. Let us help you. You're one call away from financial freedom. Call Consolidated Credit now. 1-800-345-9251. 1-800-345-9251. Texas and Texas A&M scoreless. And Mac Brown wanted a kick-catch interference penalty here. He didn't get it. Like Kenny Vaccaro got tangled up there. And... <laughs> They said he blocked him into it. Mac didn't, Mac didn't really think so. It, the intensity is still burning with this guy. He says he's going to get this fixed and get Texas back to the level they're accustomed to. Bozzy Whitaker running back for the Horns. Flags flying. Trent Hunter. He's there on the tackle. We'll see what the flag's about. Nice job by Garrett Gilbert, only a true sophomore, using the hard count. Offside, on the defense, nose guard. Five yard penalty, first step. Kind of makes you nuts since he's closest to the ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can hear him, right? The nose guard can hear him very well, that hard bark over there. <laughs> Five yard penalty. And Texas a little room to operate. Whitaker. Fozzie looking for a little room, trying to crawl over the pile, gets it out close to the 20. You know, that photo, that, that shot that we saw of Mac Brown and his frustration, and he told us, you know, he's, he's not sleeping at night. I mean, he's been just trying to figure out what's going on here. What's the little thing that I got to tweak to get it right? He says he takes notes every single day and every single night. And when the season's over, whether it's after tonight, or whether after the bowl game, he's going to go back and try to find the little thing to tweak to get this thing back on track. Whitaker. Well, he's not a big guy. He didn't get much. He's going to bring up third down. And, and you know, the one thing that, that Mac emphasized while we were talking to him yesterday, he's fully cognizant of the great success, uh, unparalleled success that they've had you know, over the last nine years, winning at least 10 games, doesn't have to. He doesn't have to take a wrecking ball to it. He just has to find the little things to get that edge back. But, I, but there are a lot of fans here that think the wrecking ball should hit Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator. And you know, when you think about that, that's a major wrecking ball. And you're talking about a man who's been extremely successful calling plays for a long time at Texas. Third down. Gilbert, Von Miller's after him. Gil Gilbert had to get rid of it way before he wanted to. And Miller, who led the nation in sacks last year and has seven and a half this year, was applying the heat. In order to run a successful screen, you have to be really careful not to let your guys go too soon, right? You have to really time it right. Texas's linemen don't. The problem with a 3-4 defense is they like to blitz outside linebackers, but you don't always know which one's coming. That time, Tim DeRuiter tricked Texas into running the bootleg into the blitz with Von Miller, and now Texas has to punt. And Justin Tucker, the rugby punt is his specialty. He kicks it away from McNeil, who had a good return last time. Texas is going to let it roll. Getting an excellent roll down to the 30-yard line. That's where A&M will take over. Boys, don't worry with leftovers. Nothing but the main course coming on Friday. Number one, Oregon taking on Arizona. Friday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time. It's on ESPN in high definition. You can see it on ESPN3 and ESPN Mobile TV. Nick Foles against the Michael James. Then Boise State, number four, getting an opportunity against a pretty high-profile opponent. Nevada has lost just once. Colin Kaepernick by Tawa, an explosive running duo. Be able to see them at 10:15 Eastern Time on Friday night. Cyrus Gray churning. 
He'll pick up a couple. Or he's knocked down by the Texas defense. Alex Okafor on the tackle. You think Arizona has a shot to go in and, and take it to Oregon? Or with that high-powered offense, keep rolling? Well, Oregon only had 15 points a couple weeks ago against Cal. But they're averaging 61 points a game and 624 yards of offense at home this year. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, if it's in the desert, it's a different thing. But. Yeah. In the backfield, Sam Ocho and Keiston Randall checked that it was 91. Randall, the big nose tackle they've been expecting a big season out of, and Randall slams great of the turf. Now this will be his 13th tackle for a loss, and you just see he just overpowers. The center can't deal with it. That's just no way that Matt Allen can stand up. That's leverage right there. Good run defenses always are strong inside on the defensive line. That hasn't always been the case this year for Texas. Third down and 12 for the Aggies. Tannehill, not his man. It's Hudson Prelo, but Prelo is well short of the first down. Curtis Brown on the stop, and AM will have to punt it again. Last year in this exact game, defensive coordinator Will Muschamp admittedly tried to tweak too much stuff on defense, and the result was Texas AM scoring 39 points. He said he was going to keep things simple tonight, and you see the Longhorns on D. Man, they're flying around. Ken Wood, the transfer from the University of Montana, a walk-on. Flags flying all over the place. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well. False start on the offense. Number 99. <laughs> well, I think we had a double ruski or yeah. something going on Turkey Day here yeah. that I've never seen on a punt. <laughs> oh, boy. Spencer Neely, the son of former NBA player, Ed Neely, was the one who got caught for the false start. The look on your face up here. Are they, I thought the same thing for a second. Are they faking it? <laughs> and the fourth down. Wood to punt it away again. Adrian Phillips is deep for the horns. Low snap. Wood handles it and gets it out of there. Put it on the ground and hope for a good roll. He's going to go sideways. That very nearly. Kicked off the foot of a Texas player. That could have been disastrous. Instead, Longhorns will take over the 34 after the 38-yard punt. Time to take a look at this week's BCS standings brought to you by Tostitos. Top four remaining the same. Of course, the big key will Boise stay past TCU. Look at the big tests here, 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 and here. Four of the teams in the top five. No gimmies here late in the regular season. This thing could change a lot after this weekend. And I like that Big Ten scramble that's taking place this weekend. Three top ten teams, all three with pretty good challenges. Cody Johnson back at tailback for the Longhorns. Johnson throughout much of his career noted for being a short yardage back. That's what he got that time, short yardage, He's second and long. You know, offensive coordinator Greg Davis has come under a lot of fire this year at Texas. The offense only averaging right now a little over 24 points a game. That's 10th in the conference. There have been a lot of rumors, a lot of things swirling around Austin. Nine of the top 10 scoring seasons in UT history have come underneath Greg Davis. You know, he's also made quarterbacks one-name guys, Major, Vance, Colt, Garrett might be one, too. Gilbert firing a strike to John Tiles. Garrett Gilbert is no Colt McCoy in terms of running, but he has a great pocket presence and awareness about him of avoiding the pass rush and allowing time downfield. We were just talking about offensive coordinator Greg Davis. He's done a great job tonight moving the pocket around to keep Garrett Gilbert away from all of that pressure from Texas A&M. There's Tony Jaredetti who's down. He was the one applying pressure to Gilbert in the backfield, and he got back down on side near attending to his right ankle. Looks like at least that's where the trainers have their hands at the moment. Jared Eddy, who came under a little bit of scrutiny this week after the game against Nebraska, in which he and Ben Cotton were involved in a situation where Jared Eddy um, took some liberties, I guess, in the pile in a sensitive area. And once it came out on YouTube, Mike Sherman became aware of it. He handled it in-house in a way that I 
believe Tony perhaps got the message from what we understand in terms of doing a little extra running and perhaps having having breakfast not agree with him as well. Run a 300 pounder and your message gets across pretty quickly. Well Sherman said it's not what we're about at A&M certainly it's not indicative of what usually happens. And Gilbert show off a little option run and Garrett picked up a couple Sean Porter on the hit. <laughs> One thing Garrett Gilbert has been learning as he's progressed through his sophomore season is that he can make plays with his feet. It's a lot like Colt McCoy in a lot of ways. We didn't know he was such a good runner earlier in his career, but Craig, <laughs> he might not want to lead with his hip. He may want to use those shoulder up pads to deliver a blow. <laughs> You know, the high point of the Texas season has been the victory against Nebraska in that game. Gilbert ran for 71 yards. Nobody's ever going to mistake him for Vince Young or Colt McCoy, but Jesse mentioned he has been affected. That's what he does well. He finds his man, Marquise Goodwin. Goodwin into the end zone. Texas is on top. Strike. Brent Hunter missed the tackle, and Goodwin has his first touchdown catch of the year. <laughs> Justin Tucker hasn't missed an extra point all season, and he's now a perfect 26 for 26. A four play 66 yard drive that lasted only a minute 49 seconds. And you know, both fight songs reference the other school. It's that kind of rivalry in the horn strike first. How do you go about changing the world? You start with one molecule, one word. One brush stroke. One purpose. The University of Texas at Austin. What starts here changes the world. Skyline of Austin, Texas. Wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer, and Jen Brown. Glad to have you with us. As Texas on top of Texas A&M 7-0. Longhorns come in at 5-6 and six, trying to become bowl eligible. A&M has to win in order to have a chance to get a share of the Big 12 South title. Horns just scored on a 31-yard Gilbert to Goodwin touchdown pass. And Corey L. Judy's returning the kickoff. Gets out to the 34-yard line as we take a look at the scoring play. All right, let's go back, and there's a safety that's going to be right back here that you can't really see, but you're going to see the blitz off the corner. This is Greg Davis coaching his quarterback well. There's Trent Hunter, the safety for AM, missing the tackle on Marquise Goodwin, who's an NCAA champion in the long jump. He shows you the athleticism. That's a tough guy to tackle out in space. And Goodwin has aspirations of perhaps competing in the 2012 Olympics. Wills the crowd here and brings a little energy. Texas Memorial, Tannehill trying to answer. He's got Ryan Swope. Swope. Get up to the 45, maybe out to the 46. It'll be enough for the AM first down. Now that's very significant. Texas scoring first. Since Mac Brown took over as head coach, Texas has won 89% of their games when they've scored first. They've won 95 of 107. Let's see if they can hold on. So do we go home? Yeah, let's just go. Just, just fold it up. <laughs> right, right, celebrate the leave. It was fun. Happy Thanksgiving. 12% chance you got a win and now? Come on. <laughs> McNeil. Gideon and Vaccaro on the stop. Well, AM, in order for them to have a chance in this game, they have to have the first down successes like they have these past two, because they've done nothing on first down, and that's hurt them. One thing we're seeing is an up tempo offense for Mike Sherman, who began calling plays last season. He went to a no huddle, up tempo style, and it's given them advantage. Cyrus Gray makes one miss in the backfield. There is a flag coming from the defensive secondary. And flying up Okafor and Curtis Brown on the stop. Blocking it back on the offense, number seven. Ten yard penalty, second down. Uzoma Wachiku called for the block in the back. So the Aggies are 
sputtering a little bit in the early going on offense. You know where they've had their success is to the flats. We've seen now three or four really nice jobs of getting in the flat, and, and so we'll watch to see if they're not rubbing and scraping and picking and doing some things. 15 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And AM is going to be content to go to the sideline, talk it over, and See if they can put a little something together on offense. They had a good opening drive that resulted in a missed field goal, but Texas has answered. Fighting back with a scoring drive on its last possession. 7-0 Horns were headed to the second quarter. The 2011 Rose Bowl game. New Year's Day on ESPN. Here's the truth. At all states, safe drivers can save 45% or more on car insurance. Protect your home with Allstate, too and you can save an extra 10%. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like Allstate. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Available now. Rated M for Mature. They say we're young and we don't know. We won't find out until we grow. Well, I don't know if all that's true. You are each other's greatest strength. The Everlon Diamond Knot Collection. The strength of love forged in a knot. Hey, uh, Marty? Sorry, did you just text me that my house is an eyesore? It's okay. I switched to Sprint 6999 plan, so I get unlimited text. This email says it's ho ho horrendous. Email and web are unlimited, too. Why won't you look me in the eye, Marty? I just pulled up your holiday e-card. The sweaters. <laughs> Unlimited text, web, and calling to any mobile for just $69.99 a month. Now by the new BlackBerry Style. Only from Sprint, the Now Network. It's easy, easy. It's easy. Together at last. The world's first HD TV powered by Google TV. Available at Sony Style and Best Buy. Consider door busters at Joseph A. Bank first. Wool cashmere suits, $129. And all executive dress shirts, $19.99. We're opening early at 6 on Friday with every merino wool top coat, $99. And all cashmere scarves, $29. Friday until 1 at Joseph A. Bank. Are you ready? I'm ready. John, your car is here. Go get him, Tiger. When you're hitting the road for business, good luck. Enterprise will pick you up and get you on the road to success. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Get set to start the second quarter, and one thing Mac Brown told his team: do not look in the rearview mirror of this season. Longhorns come in at five and six. He said, "You can write some things, but let's not pout." Let's finish. You don't want to lose your neighbors and your friends. And right now, Texas is doing just that. Only touchdown of the first quarter belonging to the Longhorns. And now AM, they've got it back. Second and 14 for Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill quickly out to Ryan Swope. Swope gets it up close to the 50 yard line as we check in with Jen Brown. Thanks, Reese. We saw that missed field goal at the beginning of the first quarter, and you guys were talking about the winds down here. Now, it was forecasted to be in upwards of 17 mile per hour, but it's not about the speed of the wind. It's about the direction. It's coming from all different directions down here, and you've got to imagine that this is affecting the guys in some way tonight. 
No question about it, Jim. We saw it on a Randy Bullock's missed field goal for AM in the first quarter on a third down play. Tannehill stands strong in the pocket. He had smoke right in the hands. Ryan couldn't hold it. Almost caught on the deflection by Terrence McCoy. It'll be fourth down. Swope, who, by the way, already has a couple of catches tonight and has set a single season record for receptions for AM with 67. I like the fact that Tannehill stood in the pocket and trusted his his lineman up front to give him time to throw. Ball just jumped on Swope quick. Ryan Tannehill has a live arm. These wide receivers need to do a better job of snapping their heads around out of their breaks to try and locate this football in these swirly, windy conditions. You know, for all the great things that Tannehill's done as a receiver before he moved to quarterback, I think the receivers will take it a little better if he gets on them. Got a lot of passes. There's Ken Wood. Tries to knock it dead in the corner. That thing took a left-hand turn right inside the 15. And that's where the Longhorns will have it. Time for tonight's weekend menu brought to you by Applebee's. Friday, a huge day. Three games, Arizona, Oregon, Auburn, Alabama, Boise State, Nevada. But Auburn, Alabama. Here's an Alabama team that's won 20 straight games at Bryant Denny Stadium. They've given up one 100 yard rusher, sorry, one rushing touchdown during that win streak. They'll get put to the test against the Auburn. Cam Newton averages 193 <laughs> yards against on the ground, running the ball against ranked opponents. Yeah. Goodwin, who caught the touchdown pass for Texas, Ooh. took a big time hit. That was Michael Hodges. Michael Hodge is a guy at the start of the year, this coaching staff thought maybe was athletically a bit limited. And Tim DeRuiter, the defensive coordinator, thought, oh, we got to find a better guy to replace him. All he's done is play above his ability. He's been a tackling machine. Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week twice in the last three weeks. You know, Hodges started his career at the Air Force Prep School, left there. DeRuiter really didn't have an opportunity to coach him there, but he knew of him. And Hodges, a great student athlete. He was a semifinalist for the Campbell Trophy, which is the academic Heisman. Did not make the final cut. He's certainly been a great representative of AM. He's in his senior season. He had 19 tackles against Oklahoma, the first Aggie to do that since his position coach, Dad Wynn, who's up in the press box helping with the defense tonight. How about Dad Wynn? And, and you know, when you talk to the AM coaching staff, DeRuiter on the sidelines. He can talk and communicate with those assistants, make sure they really understand what he's wanting. But he has total confidence in Dat Wynn, the former great Aggie, former NFL player, of seeing what's going on down below. Third down, Nate. Neither team has been great on third down tonight, just a conversion apiece. Gilbert's got a chance to run it. And Garrett trying to turn on the wheels. He takes a couple of hits, keeps struggling, and gets the first down. That's how you run in a rivalry game, gentlemen. On this last play, Texas A&M tried to bring a corner blitz from the short side of the field. It's going to be coming from your right. It kind of gets caught up in the wash. And that allows Garrett Gilbert to kind of get to the perimeter and go get the first down with his legs. Jesse, that's what you were talking about earlier, the maturation process of learning when to make a play with your left. It is so critical. If your quarterback can get two or three first downs with his feet on third down, that is a huge bonus. Gilbert now doing what he does a little better. Kirkendall's out there trying to fight for it. All over him was Coriel Judy. Excellent coverage by the Aggie corner. Absolutely outstanding coverage and an awareness of where the football was because Judy, as he comes down the field, he has to turn and run and get with the proper formation and then turn around and fight for the ball. And I like the play call by offensive coordinator Greg Davis. You have to let the defense know you are not afraid to take shots downfield early. And again, that is into the end of the field where the wind is tricky yep. from left to right on this offense, and it's different. Fozzie Whitaker. Not much in the middle of that Aggie defense. It'll be third and about eight. Same situation as when Gilbert got 10 last time. But that's in the head, as Jesse, you were just talking about. That's in the head of Tim DeRuiter right now. Is that quarterback? He came with that blitz on the last third down, and he got burned because Gilbert found the softness in the defense. This is really an interesting chess match tonight versus, uh, between two great minds. Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator at Texas. Tim DeRuiter, really the master of a 3-4 scheme defensively for AM. They'll call it nine, third and nine for Gilbert. Pressure coming from behind, and he fires it. Kirkendall has it for another first down. So now that's two straight third down conversions for Garrett Gilbert in the horn. 
AM is going to bring at least four on each pass rush. They bring five this time, and the protection allows Gilbert again to know where to go with the football. Garrett Gilbert looks big time when he sets up and he knows where he's going with the football. You can see why he was the number one rated high school player coming out. Whitaker. Tazi picks his way and gets up about five in the 45-yard line. Now, certainly when you come to Texas to play quarterback, you have some huge shoes to fill. And if you compare the first 11 starts of Vinchon, Cole McCoy, and Garrett Gilbert, uh, the glaring difference is the turnover. That's been the biggest difference. In Garrett Gilbert's defense, he's had a lot of pieces missing that Colt McCoy had when Colt McCoy showed up. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, a guy named Jordan Shipley. <laughs> yeah, a couple of guys. <laughs> Whitaker carries it again. And, and that's why, though, that, that it's so important for Mac tonight to win to become bowl eligible so that he can practice during December getting ready for that bowl game and give him a chance to get su supporting staff. Oh, oh. Oh, Craig yeah. made it on. This is some gray I see in the hair right there. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. How about the how about the fire blaze over the top right? That's nice. <laughs> starting to feel I, left out now. That's two, that's two boards where you guys' faces are on. I'm worried about success on this play. Yeah. I, I would guess prevent. <laughs> Gilbert. The defense worked, but there is a flag down. Holding on the offense, number 76. Penalties decline. Fourth down. That's holding on the true freshman, Trey Hopkins, the left guard. But you saw there Garrett Gilbert rolling out to his left. Has an open running back down the sideline. You really got to be accurate with those throws. It's easy to let those ones get away from you. With running backs, unlike Craig, who catches everything, you really got to put them on the body. <laughs> well, that $10 worked well. <laughs> Good investment. Kendrick McNeil standing at his own 10, set to return the punt. Again, it's Tucker with that rugby-style punt. It's on the ground quickly. McNeil in a sea of Longhorns. A little dangerously picked it up. He didn't want to let it roll anymore. Sure of his hands and probably saved the Ags a few yards. They'll put it in play at their own 23. Texas A&M hasn't been able to find the end zone yet. And on Thanksgiving night, the Horns are up by seven. They've been tested, built, and driven like no other. And now they're being offered like no other. Come to the winter event and get an exceptional offer on the Mercedes-Benz of your dreams. It's our way of showing a little holiday spirit. But hurry, the offer ends soon. Many will hear the calling. Few will earn the title United States Marine. The few, the proud Marines. American innovation meets Mexican styling. Taco Bell's totally redesigned chicken enchilada. Tender marinated all-white meat chicken, slow-simmered enchilada sauce, and melty cheese wrapped up and grilled to go. Only at Taco Bell. Who wakes up before 5 a.m. on a day off? The doers. The list checker offers. The Christmas morning rainmakers. We can make that day off a morning of trading up, piling high, and saving even more. Doors open Friday at 5 a.m. See you there. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. We're lowering the cost of Christmas morning. Get a Maytag washer or dryer for, you ready for this? 249 bucks. That's 300 off the pair. I'm a Wrangler guy. Always have been, always will be. I was wearing Wranglers long before I went pro. And I've stuck with them ever since. They just fit the way jeans should fit. Relaxed and comfortable. That's my Wrangler story. What's yours? Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. I gotta say, 
Nothing beats Wrangler comfort. For long-lasting comfort, the right choice is Wrangler. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. For Texas holding a 7-0 lead, let's take a look at tonight's intelligent move brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Well, you'd expect this secondary from Texas to play well tonight. Dwayne Aquina right there, one of the best secondary coaches in the entire country. Craig, they've been flying around the back end. Since 01, when Aquina took over in that secondary and came here, eight of his nine starting corners have gone on to play in the National Football League. I'd say he knows how to get you ready to go. You just see these guys matching up against routes, tackling in open space. That's why this is the 11th best pass defense in the country. Taking guys at corners sometimes, moving to safety to get them on the field and enhance their NFL prospects. And Cyrus Gray is going to pick up a few. Keenan Robinson and Aaron Williams on the tackle. You know, talking about this quarterback switch that head coach Mike Sherman made back in the Kansas game, he had sat both Gerard Johnson and Ryan Tannehill down before the game. He warned them both that both guys might play. AM jumped out to a 17-0 lead, and that's when he made the switch to Tannehill, which was a risky move at the time because he didn't know Tannehill was going to come in and play so well. He might have blown the lead. Gray gets up close to the 30, and then Tannehill followed it up the next week, starting against Texas Tech, threw for 449 yards, broke Gerard Johnson's record, 419, which, by the way, was also the game in which Tannehill had a 200-yard receiving game. Both these guys have been extraordinarily unselfish throughout this entire situation. You know, it's tough on Gerard to stand on the sidelines and watch tonight. Third down. Tannehill going up top looking for Fuller. Fuller's first catch of the night. If he stayed in bounds, he did not, they say. Curtis Brown was on the coverage. And Jeff Fuller is one outstanding wide receiver who most of the time makes this kind of play when he has one-on-one. -on -one. 153 career receptions coming in. You see him go to the high point. Just couldn't finish the play. Well, he's six foot four. He's four inches taller than Curtis Brown. And this really is his strong suit, Craig, going up and catching footballs in traffic. That's another good example of great play coming from the Texas secondary tonight. Ken Wood about to hunt it away to Adrian Phillips. Brought a little heat, but Wood got it out of there. Put a little spin on that baby, and they're going to mark it dead at about the 26-yard line. The Longhorns have a 7-0 lead in the football when you come back. Hoping you find something special in your driveway this holiday. <laughs> Get an exceptional offer on the Mercedes Benz you've always wanted at the winter event going on now. But hurry, the offer ends soon. They rise and shine even when the sun hasn't. They treat themselves well. On occasion, even indulge. They don't run errands, they run errands. They don't see mountains, only little bumps. They know how to kick in and kick back. That's the Ultra Life. Michelob Ultra, 95 calories, 2.6 carbs, and exceptionally smooth taste. It's the superior light beer, perfectly balanced for the Ultra Life. Is it the end of TV as you know it? It's the LG Infinia LED TV, the only one that's THX certified for picture quality. So, is it a TV or something better? AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network, period. 
State Farm agent Carrie Maddox loves, loves to tell it. everyone how drivers can get discounts up to 40%. Your, Your neighbors, neighbors can tell you too. <laughs> They're probably some of State Farm's 40 million drivers. So talk to them. Then call a State Farm agent like me. Call her. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer. And Budweiser. Want to go home with me tonight? I'm the designated driver. Budweiser. Responsibility matters. Thanksgiving feast, Texas style, for a terrific rivalry game. Certainly, this is what the Pilgrims had in mind when they landed in America. To celebrate Thanksgiving. <laughs> Longhorns with a 7 0 lead. Gilbert going up top. He's got Goodwin out there. And Goodwin could not hang on to it. It'll be second down and 10. And we're seeing Greg Davis really try to get Garrett Gilbert going and turning him loose a little bit, too. You know, he made a funny comment to us yesterday, Greg Davis did. He said, You know, the thing about Texas, and he's from Texas is that all the dads around here, they know how to coach baseball in this state, and they all know how to call plays in football. <laughs> and he said, you know, that's the challenge. <laughs> Matt Brown told us that 13 years is a long time for a head coach, but 13 years is a longer time for an offensive coordinator. And there's always a new face somewhere out there on the college landscape that's lighting up scoreboards with a new scheme on offense that fans become attracted to and they want. I, I think it's just a matter of getting the supporting cast around Garrett Gilbert. And guys are taking a look at that pass attempt at Marquise Goodwin. And, I, you know, Greg has taken all of this stuff in stride. Yeah, I think the thing that you have to remember is he's the same guy who called the plays for Vince Young and for Major Apple White and for Colt McCoy. That's a great job just getting his hands on oh, that you know football what? in the first toe. place. But, yeah, I, I think maybe the right toe maybe got down. I'm, I'm surprised, A, he even held on to that. B, I, from that other angle that we just saw, I, I think I think that would qualify as indisputable video evidence. Look at this. He, there is possession. Is there targeted. possession? Is the ball turning uh, in his hand? Uh, okay, no, you know what? Ball hit the ground. Yeah, ball hit the ground. Yeah. Well, that's a great job still of using a tremendous your body. Effort. Isn't that amazing? The body control of Goodwin to come around. It's not. That's not just a track guy, is it? No. Long jumper, champion, and. Turning your body like that, that's impressive. So going back to Greg Davis, guys, you're right, Reese, what you would mentioned earlier, people forget that last year this offense averaged 39 points a game and played in a national championship. And people forget the 2005 team set a record for points scored After 13 After further games. review, the ruling on the field stands as an incomplete pass. Second down. That's Scott Novak, our referee tonight. From great work by our camera crew. You saw that they got another one right. Uh, and just, again, more... more just factual evidence about Greg Davis and paid us off. 117 years of football here, 46 of 69, 500-yard games have come under Greg Davis. Well, like everybody else in the program, you know, Mac Brown's going to look at everything in the offseason and evaluate. He evaluates coaches every year. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's, that's what head coaches do. Gilbert, we will run it again. Garrett will step out of bounds. Just a little bit short of the 30-yard line. He'll take another shot on third down. We've seen Garrett Gilbert time and time again tonight not be afraid to tuck the football and go get positive yardage. And that is not a gashing play. But third and seven is way better than third and ten. And I tell you what's a lot better than on, on second and ten throwing it up down the field for a turnover, which was hurting the Aggies early on in the season with all of the errant throws that put them in a bind. And Gilbert has thrown 15 interceptions this year. That is one of the growth areas. He has a unique ability to receive the field well, but at times he's felt the heat and given it up. He sort of rushed that one out. Kirkendall has it, and Kirkendall will be stopped short of the first down. We'll bring up fourth down for Texas. Trent Hunter and Michael Hodges on the stop. Nice play call by defensive coordinator Tim DeRuder. That's called a cover zero blitz when there's no safety deep. You're bringing one extra rusher than the offense can block, which forces the football to come out early and allows your players to make a tackle in front of the sticks. Justin Tucker, you've seen his rugby-style punch tonight. He'll punt it away for the third time. It's Kendrick McNeil is waiting deep for the Aggies. Ball does not get to McNeil. It's stripped away on the ground, and the Longhorns have it. 
was Dustin Harris who caught the punch short had it stripped away for the second time on special team tonight remember the opening kickoff Texas stripped it away Aggies got it but this time the horns were able to come up with it it's Alex Zumberg who got it you know it's just a matter of awareness with the football in your hands and as an Aggie returner on the special teams you have to realize that the Longhorns are coming down and they're punching and they're trying to put the ball on the ground the advantage of these rugby style punts when the punter kind of catches a snap and rolls out to his right it allows the coverage team more time to get downfield and that was Carrington Bindham cornerback was able to make that play to force the fumble Dunbird's getting the congratulations for recovering it but it was Bindham who had a shot at him the freshman and he made it pay off as Cody Johnson pounds inside the 35 before Hodges stops it. Uh, you know what and we uh, we wondered whether or not the emotional energy could be there from the Aggies. They did show up. The Nebraska game didn't take it from them. But equally was the Texas Longhorns. They're playing a lot faster tonight. This is where Texas has really struggled on offense this season. Sudden change situations drives under 39 yards. They've scored touchdowns on only three of 13 drives all year. They have to capitalize on this opportunity. Johnson. Cody to the corner. Inside the 20 and he gets down to about the 17. It'll be first and 10 for the Longhorns. When you have a reputation of being a guy who will run you over, it is what allows Johnson to make the move that he does in the open field. Right, and Michael Hodges is very upset along the sideline as he goes over to the top. Now, you can't see it at the end, but Hodges, I saw him give a little After shot. the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense, number 37. That's the distance to the ball. First down. I was looking down just where that play was, and there was a guy standing on the side in a Texas sweatshirt, and I don't know what provoked Hodges. No excuse for it anyway, but he gave him he gave him a little shove to the chest as he walked away, and that's what drew the flag from the official. These rivalry games, lots of emotions between both sides, not just amongst the players, but all over throughout this stadium. You have to keep your cool, have to keep your calm. That's cost Texas A&M now. Texas knocking on the door. And Coriel Judy's going to have to learn in open field. He's got to stay up, keep his eyes to his target, because Johnson will be back. Oh, ball's on the ground. Sean Porter has it in the Aggies. Go ahead, AM this year has forced now 28 fumbles. This is a defense because of their aggressiveness that gets to the football. They force opportunities for their team. This was a huge pickup, and again, failure by the Longhorns after a sudden change. Mac Brown joked yesterday when he got it that close, he was going to throw it to the other end of the field because they were better off there. The turnover stops the Longhorn threat. ESPN Monday Night Football, 49ers Cardinals at 8.30. Some people just know how to build things well. Give you and your loved ones an expertly engineered Mercedes-Benz. <laughs> at the winter event going on now. But hurry, the offer ends soon. to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronix Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronix Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer, and are reporting on my credit. If you have an active checking account and can afford low, flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronix Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. My flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget. 
And my kids are getting ahead in school. I've started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. Texas A&M just forced a turnover. You're looking at Michael Hodges. He's had a sensational season for, as a linebacker for the Aggies, but he lost his composure along the Texas sidelines a couple of moments ago. A call for an unsportsmanlike conduct as he gets involved with an Aggie ball boy. You saw it right at the end. He gave him a little shove in the chest. I don't know what precipitated that, but sort of speaks to the uh, heightened passion of the rivalry game that we see between these two Tannehill quickly to swope swope and get it out across the 15 as we head inside the six minute mark and guys you know we're approaching now six quarters in which Texas A&M hasn't scored a touchdown. I think tonight specifically you give a lot of credit to Texas on defense particularly the, the way they played in the back end. Now let's see how they do in sudden change. Will Muschamp tells his guys you have to be the fireman. You got to put fires out when we turn the football over, not let them score points. Cyrus Gray. Gray into the open field. Cyrus Gray on his way. Gideon giving chase. So is Williams. They won't get him. Touchdown AM. 84 yards. Well, the fire hose wasn't long enough to put that fire out after that sudden change. <laughs> man, oh man, just when you say the AM offense has been struggling, Cyrus Gray, uh, over 100 yards for the sixth straight game, most of it coming on that run. And Randy Bullock ties it at seven, and just like that, the Aggie offense alive, and the Yale leaders are energized. This small AM contingent here in Austin, but they are enjoying. The explosive run from Gray by 30 yards, the longest of the season for him. And the Aggies have tied it up, touchdown apiece. Start watching in one room. Pause and continue watching in any other room. Don't just watch TV, direct TV. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the much anticipated matchup between the Eagles and the Bulldogs. Ho hold on. I'm not quite sure what we're seeing right now, but cows are parachuting onto the field. I cannot believe what I'm watching. Two cows landing on the field. There's a third headed into the stands. <laughs> it's actually headed right towards a burger. For, look out! Oh, my. That's going on the highlight reel. This is for Cindy. I wanted to get her something special this year. You want to decay. She'll love it. <laughs> Trust me. I know. More milk? Thanks, Dave, but... I gotta fly. <laughs> Gift giving experts agree on K. Save 20 to 50% on select diamond fashion jewelry. One more reason K is the number one jewelry store in America. I love it. Santa said you would. No, really. Every kiss begins with K. What's your 230 feeling like? Mine's more like a 230 mile feeling. My family depends on me to get from point A to point B in one piece. So I get my rest and I take five hour energy. It's quick. It's simple, You're not all wired up. It's just smooth sailing until it's time to stop. You want to be sharp behind the wheel? Take it from a truck driver. Rest often, take five hour energy. Five hour energy. Hours of energy now. No 230 feeling later. Welcome back. Coming up on the IBM Halftime Report, I'll be joined by Mark Mann, Lou Holtz, as we'll take a look at NFL games today on Turkey Day. And we'll also preview the Iron Bowl. And Dr. Lou has a pep talk for Oklahoma State as they get set to take on Oklahoma. Also want to remind you, going on an ESPN2 right now, we've got a game 
That is in overtime. 76 apiece in its second OT. Georgia and Notre Dame tied at 76 apiece with about two minutes left in that second overtime. Reese. And John, we're tied here too after Cyrus Gray's 84 yard touchdown run. His longest of the season and the longest allowed by the Texas defense this year as well. Malcolm Williams, DJ Monroe, set to receive Bullock's kickoff. It'll be Monroe. He took a couple back last year, and Monroe stopped just as he crosses the 20 yard line as we take another look at the long run by Gray. We talked about the two true freshmen. Watch the left true fruit, true freshman Luke Jokel and what he does with Acho. Emmanuel Acho is a linebacker. That opens up Gray to kick it into gear in the open field. Cyrus Gray spent two weeks this past offseason at the Michael Johnson Performance Center to work on his burst and speed pull defenders. I'd say that training time was time well spent. Showing you that speed on that run. Wow. Gray is energized. In him offense as Gilbert tries to get it back. He fires a dart. It's a first down. Kirkendall's had a big night tonight. James makes the grab. Enough for the first down. They'll move the chains. It'll be at the 35 yard line. James Kirkendall had a career day last week and a win over Florida Atlantic with 123 receiving yards. I think Garrett Gilbert has found a lot of chemistry with him here in the second half of the season. We've seen tonight that's been a go to guy for him on the perimeter of the field. Gilbert running out of time. He threw it over to John Childs. Childs made the catch, tiptoeing along the sidelines. Let's just see the composure of Gilbert. You know, they're, everybody's covered deep down the field, and, and AM's done a nice job. Gilbert waits, he's patient, and Childs, the former quarterback, gives him a target for a short game. Childs picked up three. It'll be second and seven. Cody Johnson rumbling across the 40. The third down and long three. You know, one thing that really impressed me talking with Garrett Gilbert yesterday was just his understanding of, of the game of football and how things work. And we talked earlier about the 15 interceptions this season. Six of those were batted down at the line of scrimmage. A couple of those were drops by receivers. I asked him how frustrated he was. He said, you know what? It's just part of the game. You got to play through it, keep playing. He never got down about it, pointed fingers. He's fought through this season. Aggie's coming after him. Garrett with a chance to pick it up with his feet. He does. And AM territory, and Gilbert's knocked down at the 46 yard line. It'll be a first down for Texas. You now have Texas has converted on four of eight on third down. And this is that awareness, that total awareness that we're talking about from a quarterback, Gilbert. He knows when to run and to take off and how much he needs to get for that first down. It is so valuable to have a quarterback that can move the chains on third down. Cam Newton is the best in the country at doing it. Terrell Pryor probably the second best in the country at doing it. Garrett Gilbert, that's the second time tonight he's been able to do it. Half roll, Kirkendall makes the catch. And Jesse, you were talking about the perspective of Garrett Gilbert. His father played quarterback five straight Super Bowls, in fact, as a backup with the Buffalo Bills and San Diego Chargers. And so his dad, Gail, who played at Cal, is able to be a nice sounding board and tell him, hey, you got to let things go when they go wrong. Bozzy Whitaker. Whitaker is inside the 35, and the horns are on the move. I don't care if your dad played or not. That's that's really helpful. But like Greg Davis said, you can't tell a player he has confidence. The success on the field that Garrett Gilbert has had has gained confidence in himself and his teammates have fed off. I think one of the criticism Garrett Gilbert has gone through this year, a lot of people have thought that he's kind of let the pressure get to him this year. Well, the pressure tonight has not gotten to Garrett Gilbert. He didn't seem stressed yesterday. <laughs> well, he's under some stress right now in a big time sack from Texas A&M, Ben Bass, backup defensive end in there to get the sack. You know, one of the things about Texas A&M in this 3-4 scheme, you have to have big physical defensive ends. Ben Bass is 280 pounds. You see the strength versus the double team, able to walk two blockers, not just a tight end, 
Fozzie Whitaker barely gets any of them on the outside. The 280 pounds, those are the types of players you have to have at defensive end in this scheme, 3-4. A 13-yard loss. Gilbert feeling the heat again. Von Miller's after him from behind, and Von's got him. Two straight sacks by the artist wanting to be, wanting to be known as the wrecking crew again. The different looks, the variety of looks. Sean Porter, number 10, is going to fake a blitz. Then he goes back and he comes. And so it's really keeping one extra receiver in the backfield. I have to block him. And it changed the vision of what Gilbert was looking at. And now Gilbert is looking at third and 28 after being sacked twice. Aggies and Horns tied at seven. It's time for what Texas A&M does best. We blend intellect with ethics to invent and energize. We lead with character and vision to renew and heal. We explore and discover. Now it's time for Texas A&M. Aggie defense has come up with consecutive sacks. And they have Texas looking at a third and long. Maybe Waco. Adams reaching into the office now to try to see what they can dial up on defense. It's all the rage in college football now, the picture cards. Eric Williams bailed out of a blitz look. Fozzie Whitaker on the ground. They get it down to about the 40 as we head down toward the one minute mark in the first half because of these windy conditions again you have to anticipate Mac Brown thinking about what to do here I mean I'm, you're not going to try a field goal from this length with this win well A&M used a timeout they'd like to get the ball back in the final minute of the first half Saturday night football continues on ABC with a big 12 battle Landry Jones and the Sooners taking on Justin Blackman and Oklahoma State if Oklahoma State wins, they go to the Big 12 championship games. If Oklahoma wins and A&M wins here tonight, we could have a three-way tie, which could conceivably be determined by the BCS standings that would likely favor the Sooners. You see these two great stars that you'll see 8 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. Some will see Notre Dame versus USC. I think that's the, that's the, the factor in this game. Landry Jones, he's hot. Ryan Broyles, unbelievable. DeMarco Murray, they have the firepower to match that explosive Oklahoma State offense. It's been a one-sided battle. Oklahoma State has not beaten Oklahoma since 2002. Is that the big brother syndrome? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, McNeil can't quite chase it down this time. He thinks about grabbing it. Kendrick better get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't be standing around when that thing's bouncing at your feet, huh? <laughs> you sounded like a coach. <laughs> you know, that moment like, get well, you out know, of there. You know, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> look at coach either side. You know, there he went. Standing around What's watching him hit off his foot. <laughs> you know, it's not good. Yeah. Uh, Leave it alone. All right, so we got about a minute to go here in the first half. 59 seconds to be precise. AM's backed up in their own end. What do you expect to see him do here? Yeah, not, not a whole lot. I don't think they're going to be very risky at this at all. They were really happy to get the explosive play they had out of Gray. So go to the go to the locker room without risking anything. Only one timeout to work with as well. High formation behind Tannehill. Fake the pass. It's a great, and this time Cyrus didn't find much running. This is why we love rivalry games, because you throw the records out the window because there's so much passion and pride that these players are playing with. If you're Texas right now and Mac Brown, I think you have to be happy with the effort your team has given. Really, the difference in this game, Texas fumbling the football deep down in AM territory, and then the long run by Cyrus Gray to tie this football game up. Half a minute to go. Could easily be the final play of the first half. Gray's got it. A lot of Longhorns in the backfield. And he'll find nothing this time. Easton Randall was first. He had plenty of help. As the clock is headed down toward 10 seconds. And, and now Texas is going to use a timeout. Maybe get a shot at it right at the end after Gray loses seven. Now earlier, 
this morning we had a little crew football game here. Look, look at the pony firing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I... Woo! <laughs> Act like you've been there before, Craig, right? <laughs> oh, what a catch by Jeff. Yeah, I think that was that was that was the game winning catch. What was Jim Brown and jumping up about? Jim was on the losing team. And, and who who quarterbacked that losing team again? Guys, this has been a great first half in this game so far. You know, watching the energy and the excitement from this Texas team really gets you fired up to watch more football here. Reese, wasn't it fun to win today? Oh, man, I tell you what, there's nothing better than winning. You know, I, I, Craig and I can really understand what these guys out here are going through. Just, you know, the thrill of victory. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. What a great. We have an awesome crew. Yes, we do. It, fantastic crew dinner last night for Thanksgiving. Uh, just a, we got a really good family here. Please reset the play clock to 25 seconds. The game clock is correct at 20 seconds. So we have 20 seconds left in the half. And the camera guys working. Yaw man out there. How many catches did Yaw man have today? <laughs> I don't think he had any. There goes Cyrus Gray. Wow. And Gray's going to pick up the first down. <laughs> hey, you call timeouts and give him yeah, a chance. Yeah. You may not want to do that. Yeah, let that thing go. <laughs> you know what, uh, Reese, your son Christopher played uh, today with us. He, he did. He quite, was, quite the player. He, he did a great job. I'll tell you one thing I got tired of, though, is people kept coming up to me and saying, boy, your son's a really good athlete. His mother must have been a great athlete, huh? <laughs> Is he triggered? Is he triggered out there? As we reach halftime, there's Chris. Chris was Chris was intense. He kept saying, I can beat the producer, Phil Dean, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I can take him deep. Oh, well, seven, the, winning, the winning coach, seven. our director, Mike Schwabe. That's right. There you go. Head coach, excellent drafting by Schwabe, I think. <laughs> we have a better one going on here in Austin, better than this morning. 7-7, Texas and Texas A&M locked up at halftime. It's the Longhorns trying to become bowl eligible. Texas A&M trying to stay alive to get at least a share of the Big 12 South title. Oklahoma State and Oklahoma playing on Saturday. Pokes can win it outright. You see right now it's 7-7 seven, seven now at the half as we check in with Jen Brown. Coach, you had that long touchdown run by Gray, but other than that, not much success on offense. What do you need to do to get better in the second half? Well, we have to convert third downs. Um, I thought we were chipping away at the running game a little bit, but uh, haven't been able to convert on third downs the way we should. Uh, our throwing and catching has been a little bit suspect. Uh, it'll be better in the second half. You had one turnover. You had a missed field goal on special teams. How much did that hurt you here in the first half? Well, hopefully we can overcome it, but uh, certainly be a heck of a lot better going into 10-7 than 7-7. All right, thanks, Coach. Reese? All right, Jen, so we are tied up at 7. Texas A&M trying to win its ninth. Now let's join John Saunders, Dr. Lou Holtz, and Mark May for the IBM Halftime Report. Happy Thanksgiving, gentlemen. Same to you, Reese, as well. We appreciate that. And we've got a 7-7 game as it's very important to both teams. One trying to be bowl eligible, one trying to hope to find their way into a championship game. But when you've got your calculator out, <laughs> adding up yards, you know that Cyrus Gray's having a good first half. Another 100-yard day. And I think it's no coincidence that Texas A&M started to go on their winning streak when Cyrus Gray was named the starting running back. Six consecutive games, he's gone over 100 yards. So far in five of those games, they have won the football game and they're on their way tonight if he can continue at this pace. Here you're going to see it's an 84-yard touchdown run. He does a terrific job cutting at the line of scrimmage, and now he shows his speed. They've got an angle on him, but they can't catch him. He's in terrific shape, goes over 100 yards in this game in the first half alone, and Cyrus Gray is the key of this football game and the offense for Texas A&M. Well, I used to tell the football team all the time, there's going to be five or six plays going to determine the outcome of the game. The problem is I can't tell you what five or six are going to be. But there were two plays in the first half that are going to determine the outcome of this game. Number one, Texas had 7 nothing. have the ball on A&M's 10-yard line, fumbles the exchange. What happens then? 84-yard touchdown run by Gray. Those two plays went around, changed the whole first half from being 10 nothing to being 7-7. Seven -seven. It's amazing that we're watching Texas fighting for their sixth victory of the season. You, you just never, ever expect that as well. The National Football League, of course, it is Thanksgiving, so they play a little ball. New Orleans facing Dallas. Drew Brees trying to fire up his team. And Dallas is trying to be fired up with the season they're having. Drew Brees over the middle to Graham through his hands. 
and it's picked off made it. How about them Cowboys? <laughs> While the Cowboys get it going, it's a sharp choice. Powers his way up the middle. Cowboys take the first lead of the game at 27 to 23. Still in the fourth quarter. John Kitten to Roy Williams, 47 yards. And coach, I bet this used to drive you crazy. He gets stripped of the ball. And New Orleans comes up with it. Michael Jenkins. And that gives Drew Brees one more chance. And that's something you don't give Drew Brees. Connects with Lance Moore. End zone touchdown. Saints up 30 to 27. 31 seconds left. Cowboys looking to tie, but it's a 59 yard attempt by David Bueller. It's no good. And the Saints beat the Cowboys. So the Cowboys two game winning streak is over. Stick around. Dr. Lou. <laughs> Get ready to give a pep talk to the Cowboys. Boy, if they only knew he wore makeup. <laughs> Jack makes you a holiday hero. Shop early and save. Well, we're ESPN College Game Day heads to Bedlam and Stillwater as the Sooners and Cowboys duel for a spot in the Big 12 championship game. Barry James Sanders resembles his father with more than his name. Plus, Chris Conley details the history and politics behind the helmet sticker. Talk to your position coach like, hey, coach, you know, watch, watch this play. You know, I might need a sticker for that one, you know. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturday at 9 a.m. on ESPNU, continuing at 10 a.m. on ESPN. It's not always about what's on the scoreboard. It's about what's in your heart. Big 12 Conference student athletes are driven by what's in their heart. Achieving on the field, in the classroom, in their hometowns. Ultimately, it comes down to this. Players have skills. Athletes and champions have heart. The Big 12 Conference. Need cash now? Tired of struggling paycheck to paycheck? Ping Payday can help. Ping Payday provides hassle-free payday loan advances so you can get your money when you need it for bills, car repairs, medical emergencies, and other unexpected costs. It's your money. Get it now. Ping Payday made it easy for me to get money when my car broke down. Our process is secure, safe, and fast. Log on now and get up to $1,000 with no paperwork and no hassles. Once you are approved, you can get your check as soon as the next business day. Bad credit? We understand. Our friendly agents look at more than just your credit score, and they will work with you even if you have been turned down by other lenders. I needed money for bills, and they got it to me in less than 24 hours. Ping Payday knows that everyone needs a little help sometimes. Get the money you need with the dignity you deserve. We will treat you with respect and help you get the cash you've earned and need fast, safe, and easy. Get your money now. Visit us online at onepingpayday.com. That's one ping payday. Twenty-one twenty, Auburn. Alabama can just run their offense seventy-nine yards away from a touchdown. Oh my! Do you feel it right here? Looks, throws. Julio. He's got a first down inside the forty. Looks and throws. Julio across the middle of the thirty. McElroy rolls and throws. Richardson fifteen. He's to the ten-yard line. Play action fake. Rolling right to throw off Church. Touchdown. That was a year ago, but the stakes are pretty much the same this time around. One team is perhaps on its way to playing for a national championship. This time it's Auburn instead of Alabama. Cam Newton's going to be the key. No surprise there. And he wasn't playing for Auburn last year. I think no. that's the huge difference maker this year for the Auburn Tigers, the way that Cam Newton can run the football and throw the football for this football team. Against LSU this season, throwing the football, he was outstanding, but he was even better running with the football. He's got 21 touchdown passes through the air, 17 on the ground, and he's even caught one. And against this LSU defense, number one in the SEC run defense at the time, number six in the nation, he rushed for 217 yards. He will be the difference maker in this game. There have been 11 teams that have tried to scheme 
even stop Cam Newton this season, no one has been able to accomplish it. But the one thing you haven't said is Cam Newton plays defense because he does it. You know all those guys that was in that highlight film for Alabama? They're all back. Julio Jones, McElroy, Richardson, and Ingram. And that's what Alabama's going to have to do. They play great defense, and they'll play very good defense as well this Saturday or Friday. But the difference is going to be Richardson and Ingram have got to have a great game running the football. It's going to put a lot of pressure on the offensive line. But I do believe Alabama will beat them in Tuscaloosa. I think it's going to be a close game, but I think Auburn will find a way to win this game. It's not because of just Cam Newton. He definitely is the prize of this football team and of this game. He's the one player that everyone wants to watch and see because he is the leader in the Heisman Trophy contest. But here's the key. Michael Dyer at the running back position, true freshman, just under 900 yards rushing. Once they stop to scheme Cam Newton, they scheme to stop Cam Newton, they give the ball to Dwyer. He throws the ball vertically. He even catches the ball out of the backfield. He has a touchdown reception. So it's not all Cam Newton. It's the Cam Newton no, show. No, no, He's got a lot they, of other this players. This is good Alabama. A defense also they lead the country in interception and playing at home has a tremendous impact on the outcome of this football game I know it's a great rivalry throw records out etc but Alabama does not want to see Auburn have a chance to play for the championship of the country no question about it these two teams hate each other and Alabama won a national championship a year ago not surprised that Auburn might have a chance to play for one this time of year Longhorns touchdown early had a 7-0 lead, but it's now 7-7. This halftime report is presented by IBM. Let's build a smarter planet. Visit IBM.com slash smarter planet. I have a drug problem. 10% of the world's medicine is counterfeit. Affecting over a billion people a year. On a smarter planet, we're building intelligence into things. So we can follow this medicine from the factory to the distribution center. To the pharmacy. And know it's the real thing. Keeping counterfeits off the shelves. In places like the U.S. Tanzania. And India. Smarter medicine is safer medicine. That's what I'm working on. I'm an ibm -er. Let's build a smarter planet. I love working on Black Friday. It is the most exciting day of the year. We want to get you exactly what you're looking for, and if you don't know what you're looking for, we're going to help you find it. It's just going to be so great. It's the best day. We'll have a 15-inch Toshiba laptop with 3 gigabytes of memory for $189.99. And we have a 32-inch Samsung HDTV with a Nintendo Wii for $399.99. These deals are epic, and they're only good Friday from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. I really love Black Friday. I'm not lying. <laughs> Every day, we learn from the apes. Today, the apes have discovered the ground pound move from the Donkey Kong Country Returns game. They figured out that pounding the ground upends everything, rendering their enemies senseless. Pound the ground, blast out of barrels. Use Diddy Kong's barrel jet. There's so much to learn. Is that a victory dance they do? Donkey Kong Country Returns. Rated E for everyone. The Wii console in two games, $199.99. <laughs> Welcome back to the IBM Halftime Report. As we told you, NFL football on Thanksgiving, the Patriots clobber the Lions 45 to 24 as Tom Brady threw for 341 yards and four touchdowns. And a game going on right now, the Bengals trailing the Jets three to nothing. Forget the helmet. That dog is ugly. All right, here. Yeah. The home team. <laughs> <laughs> Game day on the road Saturday again. It begins at 9 a.m. Eastern time with Aaron Andrews and Chris Fowler and the gang at 10 a.m. on ESPN HD. Oklahoma against Oklahoma State. It's Bedlam, 8 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. Time now for the IBM Insight Center, and we talk about wide receivers. Ryan Broyles and Justin Blank Blackman rank in the top five in the country in receptions per game, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. Blackman has had at least 100 receiving yards and a touchdown in all 10 of his games this year. And Broyles, already Oklahoma's career leader in receptions and touchdowns, is also the first OU receiver to have 100 catch season. Which brings us to Dr. Lou, whose pep talk is for the Cowboys. Dr. Dr. Lou, Dr. Lou, that's Dr. Dr. Lou, Dr. Lou, the doctor will see you now. 
Okay, man, get a smile on your face and a song in your heart. These are exciting times. Let me tell you about a man that came home late at night. His wife was upset and complaining. He said, let me acquaint you with a few facts of life, young lady. He said, behoove you to know I just lost you in a poker game. She said, how'd you do that? He said, it wasn't easy folding with four aces. We ain't going to be easy to beat Oklahoma, but we can and we will. Last year, all we had to do was beat Oklahoma. We'd go to BCS Bowl. We got beat 29-0. And from that football team, we only had two starters coming back on offense and only three on defense. Nobody gave us a chance to win. We're picked to finish next to last in our division. We weren't among the top 45 teams in the country preseason. And yet all our goals are still alive. We win today. We win our division championship. We win next week. We win the conference championship. And we're still alive for the national championship with a 12-1 record. Man, great players make great plays in great games. We have a lot of talent on this football team. You look at our quarterback. Yeah, he's a little old. Some people think he went to high school in a GI Bill, but that's not true. But he has thrown for 3,780 yards. Now you look at Kendall Hunter, one of the best running backs in the entire country. Over 1,300 yards already. And Justin Blackman, our receiver, is as good as anybody in the world. Yeah, we have talent. We're family. That means we help one another. We care one another. We encourage one another. Of all the things written and said by men, the saddest words it could have been. Men, when this game's over, have absolutely no regrets. They say they're old pilots and they're bold pilots. There are no old, bold pilots. We don't worry about being old, but we must be bold today. Go out there and play this game exciting. I want to play the game early in the morning. Why? So we'd have longer to celebrate. Now let's go whip Oklahoma. Doctor! Dr. Lou, Dr. Lou. is out. Dr. Lou is a man. He's not 41. <laughs> I'm 41, but Dr. Lou is a man. <laughs> Big run by Cyrus Gray here. 7-7 seven, seven tie. <laughs> Together, we'll make her holiday. That's why only Zales is the Diamond Store, where you'll get an extra 15% off store-wide this Friday till 2 p.m. It's an easy, easy way. It's an easy way. Make a fresh, fresh start. It's an easy day. It's an easy line. It's a fresh start. You're a good sense. Together at last. The world's first HD TV powered by Google TV. Available at Sony Style and Best Buy. AT&T introduces a new Windows phone. With an irresistible full key. Oh, too much? A phone that gets you to the stuff you love faster. Only from AT&T. Rethink possible. Want to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronix Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronix Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer, and are reporting on my credit. If you have an active checking account and can afford low, flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronics Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. My flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget, and my kids are getting ahead in school. I started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. Welcome back, everybody, and with Thanksgiving almost behind us now, we start to think about Christmas. Lou, when you were a kid, you probably played with a ball and a stick, is, is what I imagined. By the time Mayday and I were, were kids for Christmas, we wanted to get a slinky. But imagine kids today now with the video games. They can do just about everything. As a matter of fact, through the help of the folks at EA Sports, we were able to take two different eras and put them together. The Lou Holtz oh. era of the 1950s <laughs> and the Mark May era of the 1970s. We have Pittsburgh taking on Kent State head-to-head. -head. Mark May, 
Number 73 leading his team onto the field, but he would have to go up a pump up Lou Holtz, number 52 for Kent State, ready to get him going. The game's tied at seven. Pittsburgh back down on their own side of the field. Watch Lou Holtz, the great move around Mark May, gets in there, gets the sack. His teammate picks it up and runs it in for a touchdown. You see it again on the replay, the little swim move. And Mark May doesn't know what hit him at that point. Now the game is still a 14-7 game. This time Mark May blows over Lou Holtz. Absolutely knocks him to the field. The pancake. And the running back follows him in for the touchdown. And as a result, the game remains tied at 14, of course, because back when the two of you played, there were ties. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, the first play I'm a little upset with because I didn't give up a sack in my last two and a half years of college. I don't think anybody, <laughs> I'll tell you what, they, 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 close to my they, they, he held me. He held me. They, he couldn't even hold me. They still sacked him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't give him a sack in last, but you weren't facing Dr. Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember that. Stick around. The second half is coming up. This halftime report is presented by IBM. Let's build a smarter planet. Visit IBM.com slash Smarter Planet. Is it the end of TV as you know it? It's the LG Infinia LED TV, the only one that's THX certified for picture quality. So, is it a TV or something better? Pickles! One policy, please. Our service is top-notch. We'll take care of you, your family, even this little guy. Great. Ta-da! Thank you. What else can you do? Ram up, boy. He's on break. <laughs> Caring for you and your loved ones. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. He wouldn't be afraid to show his feminine side if he had one. His mother has a tattoo that reads, Son. At museums, he's allowed to touch the art. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I prefer those Zaki's. Stay thirsty, my friends. The Dark Continent holds a secret that's even darker. Arm yourself for an adventure like no other. Cabela's Dangerous Hunts 2011, rated teen. It's not about being a man or a woman. It's about being an athlete and a student. Big 12 Conference female athletes are fierce competitors. They are gifted students, they are heroes in their communities. They define the word champions, both men and women. The Big 12 Conference. Welcome back to College Football Primetime on ESPN, served by Applebee's. About set to start the third quarter. Texas and Texas A&M locked up at seven apiece. Here are the first half stats, and they're basically even. Now A&M has an edge in rush yards, but most of that coming on the 84-yard touchdown run by Cyrus Gray. Each team has one turnover. Both teams have missed an opportunity to score in the red zone. Texas turnover turned out to be costly. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer with you. Jen Brown down on the field. So as you look at this in the in the second half, A&M's offense, aside from the big play, really sputtered at, at times in the first half. I think the first two series they had the ball, they were able to get the wide receiver and tight ends open in the flat. You know, and that was kind of a comfort zone for them. They got away from that. I think on the flip side, Texas has shown great energy on defense. Guys have been flying around. They played smart. Only one penalty in that first half. And Garrett Gilbert, 9 of 15 so far in this game. His decision making has kept Texas in this game. 
Horns get it to start the second half and they'll start from their own 20. Bullock kicks it out of the back of the end zone. Let's take a look at our coaching adjustments brought to you by Home Depot. It's very, very critical in the second half that Texas is able to shore up on the protection against this 3-4 defense and all the blitzing that at times has forced Garrett Gilbert to get out of his rhythm throwing the football. Gilbert's run the ball twice for 20 yards. Now, when Aggies present the net that they do right there, where they maintain gap responsibility and flush him outside, they've been successful. They've got to make sure they don't run out of their lanes. Longhorns trying to become bowl eligible. Texas A&M trying to stay alive for a share of the Big 12 South title. First play of the second half, and Gilbert throws it behind his intended receiver. It'll be second and ten. We've mentioned the name Tim DeRuiter a lot tonight, the new defensive coordinator for Texas A&M. Mike Sherman knew that he had a lot of speed on defense, and in his opinion, he thought a 3-4 defense would be the best defense against a lot of these spread offenses in the Big 12 Conference this year, and he went out and got one of the best in Tim DeRuiter. I like the idea of having four linebackers out there, some athletes who can run and play in space against all these shifty receivers you see in the country these days. Second down, Longhorns run it. Sean Porter there to make it. A quick tackle as we check in with Jen Brown. Thanks, Reese. I talked to Coach Brown out of the half. He said the two things that they need to improve upon here in the second half is on offense. He says the defense is moving around and they're missing a lot of blocks. And he was just beside himself about the fumble on the nine yard, nine yard line. He says that just can't happen. We'll see if they improve tonight. it has been that kind of season, Jen, for the Longhorns. The fumble as they were appearing to be on their way in to score. And then quickly Cyrus Gray turned it around with a long touchdown run. And that's where we are tied at seven Gilbert on third down firing and intercepted what a tremendous play by Dustin Harris <laughs> Harris with his fourth interception of the season he took one back 83 yards against Kansas and now Gilbert's thrown the 16th pick of the season you know and this here again Tim DeRuiter defensively watch what he does here look at the pressure that comes forcing Gilbert to throw off his back foot. As a quarterback, if you're going to miss a throw to the sidelines, you have to miss it out of bounds. Here's a comeback. The football's thrown inside, and that allows Harris to get his hand on it. Big turnover at the start of the second half. For Tannehill to Ryan Swope. Swope picking his way. He gets down inside the 35 before he's stopped by Emmanuel Acho. Now James Kirkendall has been an outlet for Garrett Gilbert early in this game tonight. But there's an example of, again, that pressure, Craig, you're talking about, sometimes forcing the ball to come out a bit early. But as a quarterback, you have to understand where the safety is in throws. You cannot leave comeback throws in the inside. Tannehill on second down. He's got his man complete. It is McNeil. In another catch. It'll be enough for a first down down to the 25-yard line. Kenny Vaccaro on the stop. There's no question about it that the adjustments that Mike Sherman can make at halftime and this Aggie offense coming out high tempo at the line of scrimmage, they'll try to test Texas early. Tannehill in a crowd and it was almost picked off. Keenan Robinson thought he was going to have a shot at it. And Tannehill was looking for Terrence McCoy. See here Tannehill is going to try to work a corner out to a slot receiver. Barely getting that football up over top of the defender, but again, there's another example of a quarterback missing a throw inside when he should miss that throw outside. Longhorns are stunning up front. We got it out in the flat. McNeil to grab. We've seen times this year when Texas's defense looks really good. Like that right there. Discipline, sound to the football. And then we've seen times where they've just been inconsistent and totally away from what Will Muschamp's all about. Third down and eight facing Tannehill. They try to take advantage of the turnover. Pressure coming. Tannehill in trouble. And Tannehill goes down. Emmanuel Acho's got him. Nice job of disguise 
by Will Muschamp in this Texas defense. Pre-snap, it looked like it was going to be a big zone coverage. And at the very last second, you see two inside linebackers rushing through the same gap. It was man-to-man. -man. I think Tannehill got, got fooled. Really a coverage set. Yeah, you know what it is, but there is a receiver that gets open. You see McNeil when he tries to go back to the outside, but... You couldn't see him. Too much pressure on the quarterback. Vision gone. This would match a career-long field goal for Randy Bullock if he could put it through, and he does from 50 yards out. The wind in his favor this time as opposed to the wind crossing the other way last time when he missed on the opposite end. And Bullock's long-range field goal has put the Aggies on top. So they take advantage of the turnover. They get three out of it, and the Aggies have the lead. See what's cooking in two flavor loaded steaks. We start with America's best selling flame grilled steak. Then we load it up with fresh ingredients and savory flavors like the Steakhouse Classic with Applebee's signature sauce. Best of all, they start at just $9.99. There's also our Bourbon Street steak with blackened shrimp, the Napa Valley Cabernet and Portobello's, and more. Applebee's new flavor loaded steaks starting at $9.99. There's no place like the neighborhood. This holiday season, buy $50 in Applebee's gift cards and get a $10 bonus card free. Look, if your best football story is some glory day's tale from a two-hand touch pickup game, be your friends a favor. Enter the Ford F-150 BCS tailgate sweepstakes. Win this and you'll be talking about a trip to four BCS games, including the championship, and have a shot at the ultimate tailgate F-150. Yeah, that's a new 2011 F-150 customized with a tailgate grill, five satellite-powered plasma TVs, and an Xbox 360. Bet your friends won't mind hearing about that. Enter now at bcstailgate.com. This Christmas, be savvy. Get huge appliance deals at Sears starting Friday at 4 a.m. Like 25% off all Kenmore Elite appliances and 15% off all other appliances. Or save $1,300 on this stainless steel Kenmore refrigerator. And save $800 on this Kenmore front load laundry pair. Plus save over 50% on this Kenmore top load laundry pair. Search Sears appliances for our everyday best prices guaranteed. Sears, be the Santa you want to be. AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network, period. The ACC Big Ten Challenge. Tuesday, North Carolina looks to rebound against Illinois. Wednesday, two heavyweights step into the ring. Duke versus Michigan State. Tuesday and Wednesday at 930 on ESPN, the home court of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Rivalry Series, unrivaled competition tonight. Texas and Texas A&M. Longhorns have won eight of the last ten meetings, but tonight Texas trying to win at six and become bowl eligible, sort of a role reversal. It is the Aggies who have hopes of getting a share of the Big 12 South title. They need a little help from Oklahoma on Saturday against Oklahoma State. Longhorn faithful would like to a bowl. Been to a bowl every year since Mac, Mac Brown has been here. They have to win tonight in order to become bowl eligible. Randy Bullock, who just knocked through a 50-yard field goal, kicks it into the end zone, and Longhorns will start on the 20. Boy, Friday night, the day after Thanksgiving, a couple of great games for you on ESPN. Arizona and Oregon, 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN as the Ducks try to remain perfect. Also trying to remain perfect at 10-15, Kellen Borer and Boise State taking on Colin Kaepernick and Nevada, 10-15 Eastern time. But Boise State and Oregon in must-win situations as Boise State Hopes either Oregon or Auburn will stumble in front of them and they'll have an opportunity perhaps to play for the national championship. Assuming they pass TCU. Option look. Pitch from Garrett to Whitaker. Oh, check that DJ Monroe into the ground. DJ Monroe might have put it on. And it's the third Texas turnover of the night. Matt Brown told us yesterday that turnovers were going to be the number one key for his football team to win this game. Here's the...
time they've had a critical fumble tonight in a very bad part of the field. Do you see the number of white jerseys around the ball? That's the way that they have played defense this second half of the season. And by being around the football, when it hits the carpet, you're able to pick it up. You know, running back coach Major Applewhite, since he took over as running back coach two years ago, his starting running backs had only fumbled eight times coming into tonight. Mm. And already now we've seen two. Texas has turned it over on back-to-back -back plays now. Tannehill gave it off to Gray, and Gray goes inside the 20. And D.J. Monroe is a guy who has explosive speed. He's a guy that the fans have clamored to see more of because he's had explosive plays. But they've, there is Major Applewhite, the running back's coach. And Major, they, they've tried to find ways to get Monroe on the field more often. That was his first carry of the night, and he put it on the ground. That's not how you get on the field more often. No. He is a... Guy with a lot of speed, but right now the Horns in trouble inside of Wachaku. Wachaku gets inside the 10 yard line. And Uzoma Wachaku, who's battling a bad ankle, slipped right on the inside and you see him hobbling up, but he got the first down and it'll be first and goal for the Aggies. You know, here's a wide receiver that turned into a quarterback, right? Yeah. And, and how uh, quickly Tannehill has picked up the little pieces of offense and the way you throw the football. That's excellent. Let's see if Texas's defense can do a better job in sudden change this drive than they did earlier. Gray. Cyrus Gray getting close to the goal line. Keenan Robinson among those there to turn him back. It's such a hard thing for a defense. They've just been out on the field after a field goal from Texas A&M. And one play later, now you're back on the field, backs against the wall, and you're just trying to keep AM to a field goal here. Second and goal. Tannehill the fade to Fuller. Jeff Fuller, first catch of the night. Touchdown, AM. Fuller's 6'4", 215 pounds, and Monroe put it on the ground, and the Aggies made him pay with the fade to Fuller. Well, this would be 28 now touchdowns in his career, and you just, that's an athlete that's going to go up and win with his hands and his ability to get his body in the right place. And Ryan Tannehill, former wide receiver, understanding the nuances where his receiver wants the football thrown. Two Texas turnovers. Texas A&M has turned it into 10 points. In fact, all 17 Aggie points tonight have come after Texas turnovers. That fumble by Monroe. Tannehill to Jeff Fuller. 32 straight games with the catch and a touchdown here. ESPN, your NBA destination. Tomorrow, warm up the leftovers for a special NBA Friday night doubleheader. Rockets Bobcats at 7 Eastern, then Warriors Grizzlies at 9.30 tomorrow on ESPN2. When I see people trying to sell an old Camry, it makes me want to show them a new Ford Fusion. I can't help myself. I'm kind of ready to move up and to get to the next level. Fusion. Yeah, I like it. I should probably brag about this a little bit. The projected resale value, it beats the Camry. 33 miles a gallon on the highway. Wow. The sync system. GPS. Correct. Phone. Yes. I love it. Get our best deals, 0% financing. And as a holiday bonus, we'll give you $1,500 toward your first three payments. Holly has something she'd like to say. Hi, Camry. This is Dr. Love. And this is Dr. Pepper Cherry. It's got a little kiss of cherry flavor. You want cherry? How about a little kiss? Jerry, trust me, I'm a doctor. With Direct TV, you can start watching in one room, pause, and continue watching in any other room. Don't just watch TV. Direct TV. Hey, fellas, what's going on? Well, we're just doing a test to see what generates more force. Dwight here, or a professional rodeo bull. Wouldn't want to be that tackling dummy. 
ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Thor, Drive One, and Dr. Pepper. There's nothing like a pepper. <laughs> Part of our crew, you see Larry and guys greeting everybody, wishing me happy Thanksgiving. The guy on the left there is Mike, our Skycam operator, and I was teasing Mike a few minutes ago in the press box about why he didn't show up at the football game this morning. He said, man, this became a father two weeks ago. I was eight hours of sleep in a row. That's big. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving you some great shots tonight with the Skycam out here and well rested. We had a rare opportunity, at least for a little while. Congratulations, Mike and his girlfriend on becoming parents. We see Jeff Fuller, who had three touchdown catches for AM against Texas last year, at his first catch of the night in the end zone. You know, his dad spoke with Mike Sherman. They talked about how do we make him better? How does he get better? They talked about coming back and being stronger to the ball, being stronger with your hands, wanting it in the air. He's done a nice job this season of setting himself up for a nice Sunday run. And Jeff Dan played in the NFL, defensive back, and former Aggie as well. Malcolm Williams, Aaron Williams, I should say, on the return. He's got room. And he couldn't keep his feet as he crossed the 30-yard line. And Texas will have it down by 10 as we check in with John Saunders. Time now for the AT&T All-American Player of the Week. It's Arkansas quarterback Ryan Mallett, who had a terrific day against Mississippi State. 17 of 26 for 305 yards and three touchdowns in their 38 to 31 win. You want to get involved, text the word VOTE to 345-345 for your chance to win a trip to the national championship. Cody Johnson getting the carry, short yardage for the Horns. Turnovers have really been the undoing for Texas here tonight. This Aggie defense has a goal at the start of the year. They wanted 30 turnovers on the season. Well, they now have 23 after three tonight, doing a nice job being opportunistic here in this football game. Well, you, you know what, and, and you mentioned this earlier, Jesse, what impressed me the most was DeRuiter came in and said he wanted to be the number one defense in the conference. Yeah. Expect to be great, you know, in his first year, and they're number two, and he's like, you know, so a player, they elevated their game. Gilbert looking for Kirkendall. Officials saying it hit the ground first, and again, Gilbert really didn't drive into that football. No, and I think you'll see that here. You're going to see pressure that gets to Gilbert again. He's not moving his feet. He's not getting to where he can deliver, and watch him deliver off the back of it again. When you're rolling out throwing, you want to be moving toward your target, where your body weight is kind of going. Here he kind of gets his feet shuffled up. It kind of it almost seems like he almost throws off the wrong foot. No feet. The very last really? second. And you, know, you, re just... you really got to be good with that. You really got to get your feet underneath you so you get the proper body weight transfer. That's Garrick Williams who's down. He's Texas A&M linebacker. Came to College Station originally with the idea of being a wide receiver. And they played him there for a while. But he's really blossomed as an inside linebacker. Put on a little bit of weight. And he's got 90 tackles coming into the night. Second on the team. Really played well for... Tim DeRuiter and Mike Sherman in this Aggie defense. You know, one thing Garrett Gilbert told us yesterday, the hardest part about playing quarterback here as a true sophomore is being a vocal leader, having the confidence and the trust of your teammates. This offense has been sputtering now during the second half. Now would be a good time for Garrett Gilbert to get in the huddle, look at his guys in the eyes and say, hey, guys, let's go now. It's game time. Game on the line. Let's get this thing going. That's Kyle Mangan, who's checked into the game to replace Williams. Left after the injury is third and nine for the Horns. Ron Miller has disrupted his man. Flag coming in in the holding area. It looked as Gilbert just threw the thing away. Bringing big time heat was Terrence Frederick from the corner. Miller was disruptive on the inside. Holding on the offense, number 76. Penalties decline. Now, Tim DeRuiter giving a different look again to this Texas offensive line. The pressure, the blitz coming from the right side, three in the middle. And on the right side from the corner, you're going to see a blitz that comes in. They're going to come off the corner. And when they do that, it's just changing the look in the eyes of Gilbert and the offensive line, the protections. Every time Garrett Gilbert has had pressure, he's rolled out to his right. That time, he almost rolled into where the pressure was coming from. He has to understand where the soft points are of these pressures. Justin Tucker gets it away. 
Kendrick McNeil trying to get everybody away from it. Texas will put it down, but there is a flag sitting inside the 25. On the offense, number 16. 10 yards will be added to the dead ball spot. First down. Now, not much is going right in the third quarter for Mac right now. No, I think, you know, you've got a complete turnaround of everything that's going on. There's the holding on the outside that you've got an Aggie defense playing offense now. They are absolutely ears back getting after That safety, Kenny Vaccaro, just got blown up there. That kind of is a personal protector for the punter, which forced that penalty. And all of a sudden, Texas A&M midfield scored on their first two drives of the second half. Big Ten title and the birth in the Rose Bowl on the line Saturday. We got three games to sort it out at noon on ESPN2. Kirk Cousins leads 10th ranked Michigan State against Penn State. Terrell Pryor and the Buckeyes take on Michigan and Northwestern and Wisconsin on ABC or ESPN. Check your local listings. Go to ESPN.com. Search maps to find out which one you can see it on. It all comes up your way at noon and then 3.30 Eastern time. Now here's the deal. You have a three-way tie in the Big Ten. It goes to BCS standings. Advantage at the moment, Wisconsin. Should Michigan win and leave Michigan State and Wisconsin in a head-to-head -head tie, that's advantage to the Spartans because they beat Wisconsin head-to-head. -head. Wisconsin's playing great football right now. I look forward to going to the Happy Valley. I've got that game Saturday. Michigan State, Penn State. Can't wait to see it. Michigan State hasn't won at Penn State since joining the Big Ten Conference. So that's not a gimme win if you're the Spartans. Look, you're playing for the Land Grant Trophy. Drag the record books to recycle that. <laughs> you pulling out the trophy name right there. That, that's one of the best things in the Big Ten Conference, by the way. Yeah. Trophy games. Cyrus Gray. Gray getting up to about the 50-yard line. Keenan Robinson on the stop. And the Longhorn defense, they, they can't give up touchdowns. And the problem the Longhorns are going to have is Cyrus Gray here in the second half. He has gotten the majority of his yardage this year in the second half. During the five-game win streak, 72% of his yardage has come during this time of this period. He's got it again. And, 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 the, and the pressure that they put on him, Reese, you know, Gray has 21-plus big plays this year of over 20 and that's kickoff returns and everything else but his explosiveness forces a defense every play to be ready and there ain't no this year when somebody has 100 yards in the ground they've actually won their last 11 games when they've had a 100 yard rusher they already got that tonight Gray's picked up more of the load after the injury to Kristen Michael a couple of weeks ago He's thrived in the role. Tannehill going for Fuller again, and he throws it way out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. Curtis Brown, good coverage on Jeff Fuller. You know, I'll still say this secondary from Texas has been impressive. And I know Fuller out jumped the guy for a touchdown a few minutes ago, but, you know, this team lost Earl Thomas as a first-round pick to the Seattle Seahawks after last year. But they still had 119 combined starts back. And they've had spotty play all year long. Will Muschamp told us, but tonight they've been lights out. They really have. They also lost Shockey Brown to a broken forearm, a guy who'd been playing well in the secondary for them. He was injured in the Oklahoma State game. It's been a difficult year. Texas also lost offensive lineman Michael Huey. Hasn't all been injuries, but a lot of, a lot of problems caused by the injuries. Okay, offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. The Aggies will back it up five before they punt it away. Ken Wood doing the punting duties tonight. The normal punter for Texas A&M, Ryan Epperson, has a hip flexor problem. So Wood transfer from the University of Montana getting an opportunity to play in this huge rivalry game. Keep in mind, Ryan Tannehill has three career help as well. The last one not too good, 15 <laughs> yards. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Against Nebraska, he told us this week I probably should have punted it with my left foot. <laughs> that one is going to be a beauty from Wood. Fredericks is going to down it on the one. And for all of the problems that Texas has had in the third quarter, this is not the most advantageous field position after the 53-yard punt. Watch Craig and Jesse get after it. Mad Dog watching them. The workout coming your way. I give thanks for that. <laughs> The 2011 Rose Bowl game, New Year's Day on ESPN.
Look at all the Toyotas for sale. Let's go with... I'm selling my Toyota RAV4. Do you know anything at all about the Escape? It's a nice light blue color, this much is... like my eyes. My goodness, it's true. The mileage is extraordinary, 28 miles per gallon on the highway. It's a voice-activated sync system. All around, it's better than my Toyota. Get our best deals, 0% financing. And as a holiday bonus, we'll give you $1,500 toward your first three payments. Is it wrong to drive a Toyota to Ford's year-end celebration? Not if you leave it behind. Monday, finally headed home, but it's been a rough one. First, you're a private time turned out to be not private. After that, you took the elevator to another level. But Monday means Monday night football, which will always give you the shirt off its back. In the drive to the championship, nothing changed this week, but it sure will next week. There are no changes between number one Oregon and number two Auburn. The reason why, they both had by. Follow the drive to the national championship all season long on College Football Final. Hi, I'm Howard Dvorkin, the founder of Consolidated Credit. For almost two decades, Consolidated Credit has helped millions of Americans just like you. We've helped nurses and doctors. We've helped police officers and firefighters. We've helped homemakers and home builders. We've helped over 5 million people suffering from credit card debt. And now we want to help you. Consolidated Credit is the one company you can trust. Our exclusive Freedom Quest program can help you find options and solutions to your financial challenges. We can reduce your monthly payments by up to 50%, consolidate your bills into one easy payment, save you thousands in interest and fees, and help you get out of debt fast. When credit card debt is the problem, we're the solution. We've helped over 5 million people. Let us help you. You're one call away from financial freedom. Call Consolidated Credit now. 1-800-345-9251. 1-800-345-9251. There is Jeff Mad Dog Madden, a Vanderbilt educated man, strength and conditioning coach with the Longhorns who had something sinister for you guys. He's a very big human being. When he stands over top of you and tells you to lift something, <laughs> you, you better lift. That's why oh, our chest, God. this is crazy. Oh, that almost yeah. hit me in the face, by the way. Look at that. <laughs> got the hammers out, working the tires. We did a bunch of things we've never done before. This is what worked, man. You had me the goal line, Jesse. The tug of what my back hurts just looking at this. That's where I got the thing, turf burn on my shin. I didn't want you scoring with me. <laughs> Well, Texas is just trying to get a little bit of room and perhaps using some of that strength that Mad Dog has instilled to push the ball away from their goal line. I like the way, though, Mad, you know, Mad Dog's theory is you do a lot of different strange workouts that force your body, whole body, to get involved. And then he does competitive things at the end of every workout to find out which fighters and which ones aren't. You build a lot of character in this locker room. You, I think the stork dropped, we're brothers, dropped you in Canada, <laughs> dropped me in Texas. Oh, man. Thank God we didn't live in the same house. We'd kill each other. <laughs> Second down and nine. Texas keeps it on the ground with Johnson. Oh, Cody Johnson is loose and gives it plenty of running room. He gets to the 25, but there are two flags down around the 10-yard line. Offense, number 67. The distance of the goal. Second down. They're going to get the freshman Mason Walters for the hold, and the big run by Johnson is negated. And this really is a microcosm of the type of season it's been for Texas. Untimely turnovers, untimely penalties. You're going to see Mason Walters blocking on Michael Hodges, the middle linebacker. That's what forces this football to come back. Hodges got up. He had the left side of his shoulder pad sticking right up in the air. Pretty easy call for the referees to make. So from the spot, we'll move it back to the five-yard line. They need to get it to the 11 for a first down. Gilbert from its end zone. Chucking it deep. Looking for his man. He couldn't connect with John Childs. You know, and that's a, that's a ball there. He has the protection. He has the time. He's trying for the home run. But that's what happens when you have a holding call that negates a nice play. You know, it's it's demoralizing. You go back to the huddle and you're like, man, we got a what? We did that again. It's hard to have success in play action when you haven't had a lot of success running the football. And on that throw right there, I'm not so sure some of the swirling wind maybe didn't bring that football back inside to the middle of the field. The direction that Gilbert is going right now is the more difficult direction in which to throw and in which to kick. 
So Bullock missed a field goal earlier tonight. Gilbert needs six, fires, and it hits the ground. He was looking for Goodwin. And AM is going to force a three and out. Dustin Harris, who had the spectacular interception earlier in the quarter, was there on the coverage. Dustin Harris, a guy. He started 11 games last year as a true freshman. He's not starting this season, but as a role player in that backup role, he's having a monster game here tonight. I think two years ago, Jesse, when we came in here and did this Thanksgiving night, AM, a really young team. Mike Sherman really looking for players. And the amount of progress that they have had in that two quick short year turnaround. Uh, Justin Tucker doesn't have a lot of room to work with. Kendrick McNeil. Oh, he puts it on the ground. He muffed it. It's still free. Longhorns had a chance at it. Now they've got it. That looks like Sam Acho that came out of there. The senior playing his final game at Texas Memorial Stadium recovers the muffed punt. That's Sam Ocho's fifth fumble recovery this season. You're going to see here on the return, looking down, trying to check out where all the action is coming from, loses sight of the football up again in that swirling wind. But it's just an awareness of where you are and what you've got going on. Field position, catch the ball, follow the ball. Don't worry about a big return here. You've got to be aware of the game and the situation that you're in. You could see McNeil's eyes come down before he had secured the football, and it cost him the second turnover on punt return tonight for Texas A&M. Now Gilbert's got good field position. Johnson, no running room. Spencer Neely there to make the tackle. Yeah, I, I don't know what you think about this here, but I, at this point here, Gilbert's going to have to make a play with his legs. He's going to have to do something on his own to pick this offense up. It's just not getting it done. But they have to run the football to give him a chance to set up some opportunities downfield throwing the football. And really, all season long, there's been a lot of inconsistency from the running back position for Texas this year. Fozzie Whitaker's at that running back slot right now. Gilbert, complete. Uh, Mike Davis, the freshman, his first catch of the night. They call him a natural slot guy. They think he's going to be a big-time player, and he moves the chains for the Horns. Another guy that they'd like to have additional practices if they could get to a bowl by winning tonight so that they can get that chemistry going between a guy like Davis coming and in, Gilbert. Coming into the game tonight, he's tied for the lead in receptions on the team. And, guys, he's only a true freshman. I mean, that, that's the youth and inexperience Texas has. That was his 46 catch. Now Gilbert's in trouble. Buys a little more time. Got Whitaker by himself. Fozzie inside the 20. And knocked out of bounds inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for Texas. <laughs> 35 yards on the play. There are those legs picking up his offense, making a play, avoiding the sack, buying time for someone to get open downfield. He made him pay for it. Not the most athletic quarterback you're going to find in the country, but doing a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, not looking to run for the first, but exhausting all of his available options before letting the play go dead. Cody Johnson. Johnson stretching popped out of that pile and he got down right on the doorstep. He's inside the one about a half yard short of the touchdown. Te Texas has been a very poor red zone football team this year. They had 15 more possessions inside the red zone than their opponents this season, but they have the same amount of touchdowns. This would be huge for them to punch in. Gilbert on the sneak. Touchdown, Texas. Garrett Gilbert with his fifth touchdown run of the season, and the Longhorns now an extra point away, from closing to within a field goal. We do have an Aggie still down on the turf. Trying to get a look. That's Jonathan Mathis. 
one of the defensive tackles for Tim DeRuiter's defense. He's being attended to right on the goal line. He plays nose guard in this 3-4 scheme. Craig, you and I know, having played against these 3-4 defenses before, that's kind of the centerpiece of this 3-4 unit. This is a guy Texas A&M cannot afford to lose right now. Been a pleasant surprise and a good player for them this season. He rotates time with Eddie Brown, who you saw there. Acho rallying up his teammates. He's been a tremendous leader through this difficult season for Texas. We talked to him yesterday. You could you could feel the the positive energy still coming from him. He, he's a guy who has great perspective. His father working to build a hospital in his native Nigeria. Well, Sam and Emmanuel and some Texas teammates have been over there. He's got great perspective on life and on the game. And he's certainly got a great future at the next level as well. And he's had a tremendous senior season, showing tremendous leadership. The extra point is through, and it's a 17-14 game. Texas's offense was really down. They were not doing anything. The Aggies defense had come out and were dominating. And by a turnover on the field, it picks them up. And they're led by Acho. Sam Acho is a guy who comes over and says, hey, let's get it done, Gilbert. Let's go. Garrett Gilbert comes in in a sudden change situation, leads his football team down the field for that touchdown. Matt Brown liking it. We got Sam Macho firing up his true sophomore quarterback. Hey, let's go. Rivalry game. And we do have a ball game right now. And Jesse, as you mentioned earlier tonight, one of the difficulties is you have a look at Big Bebo, who's down in a little caged area just off the edge of the end zone. Enjoying the latest turnover. There have been five of them in the game. It's led to 24 points. 24 of the 31 scored tonight. And Gilbert. Becoming a vocal leader has been the difficult part, and Acho's tried to nurture him through this guy on the opposite side of the ball. Kickoff squibbed along the ground. Coriel Judy. Judy, a dangerous return man. Return two for touchdowns this year, and he takes it all the way back inside Texas territory. Well, just as the special teams let them down on the previous special teams play, they get a chance to be lifted up on this one here. Good job blocking, great job of running. 35 yards on the return for Judy. Sort of took over the kickoff, the main kickoff return duties after Kristen Michael was hurt. Previously, Cyrus Gray did that, and he did an exceptional job at it. Judy took a couple back for touchdown and he's given his offense great field position here as we get late in the third quarter gray right up the middle gray's on his way there's your answer touchdown aggies 48 yards Cyrus Gray is having a night. 179 yards, two long touchdown runs. Texas worked hard to get back in it, and AM squirts back out to a two score lead. Oh. 118 point after touchdowns in a row, and the Aggies are back up by 10. In order for a running back to have a big explosive play, you have to run beyond and beside away from the arm tackles. You can't try to make it happen. Watch as Gray gets into the line. He feels the pressure around him and explodes. He runs right by the arm tackle. And then the Jesse, the speed that he has, he never loses speed as he gains ground. We talked about Cyrus Gray getting stronger as the game goes on. His ability with that explosive speed to get into the second level and make defenses pay a career night he had last week against Nebraska in terms of total production with receiving and rushing yards. And look at him again tonight, putting better games back to back. We talked about him being beat up coming into this game. He's not playing like it. He's a guy that Mike Sherman has said he gets better the more work he gets. And he felt like uh, he and Kristen Michael are, are close friends. But he felt like that maybe Gray really started to blossom when he was the guy getting the bulk of the carries, also working in the passing game as well. I'll show you how close those guys are. When Kristen Michael broke his leg at Texas Tech, right after the game, Cyrus Gray went and visited his, his buddy in the hospital right away. They have a close bond. 
The 24 14 is Darius White on the return for the Longhorns. White is cut down right at the 15 yard line as we go back to the studio to check in with John Saunders. Time for a Sports Center right now. Thanksgiving Day football in the NFL. The Saints facing the Cowboys. Drew Brees with about two minutes left over the middle to Lance Moore in the end zone for a touchdown. Saints take a 30 to 27 lead and hold on for the win. Dallas two game winning streak has come to an end. The Patriots Tom Brady 341 yards and four touchdowns throwing his first touchdown in the state of Michigan since college. He pitched a few of them then John hard to believe he shared time with Drew Henson. Henson was a fine college quarterback as Gilbert finds Kirkendall. You see what a great pro player Brady's become and he wasn't even a full time starter for a while at Michigan. <laughs> They're looking for that next <laughs> hidden gem at Michigan again well, on defense. Uh, yeah that's what they need. The offense is fine. Bex is trying to run for the first down. Eddie Brown, Jr., the nose tackle. First one to get there on Fozzie Whitaker. One thing Tim Deruder talks about at Texas A&M is his defense outplaying the other team's defense. And so far tonight, that has been the case for Texas A&M. They did it last week against one of the best defenses in the country against Nebraska, holding them to only 142 rushing yards. But you see what they've been able to do tonight. They are outplaying Texas. So imagine this defense in the second year next year under DeRuiter. Imagine the growth of what they will have. Third and short yardage has been difficult for the Horns. They're 0 for 2 tonight. Just need two. Gilbert on the flat. Now Whitaker got the first down. Longhorns will move the change as we head toward the three minute mark in the third quarter. That's an outstanding call by Greg Davis. How is that? You take your wide receiver out wide, bring him to the middle of the field, and you swing your back. And you know you're going to get him the ball. Whitaker, a good receiver. And you know having a short distance to go. It's like a toss sweep. How about Fozzie Whitaker playing with a bit of a stinger injury, forced him to miss most of Oklahoma State and all of Florida Atlantic. He's made some plays in the passing game tonight. Quick completion. Kirkendall had it, and he was hit immediately by Terrence Frederick. This is the effect if you don't have a lot of success throwing the football downfield for an offense. Cornerbacks start squatting on short routes, and they'll start driving on some of those routes. That was a very contested throw, and that was only a five yard hitch route. Knocked back to pick up three. It'll be second down and seven. Whitaker in the game lined up as a receiver. Texas five wide. Gilbert on the slam again for about the third time in the third quarter. Ball thrown well behind the intended receiver. And you know what? This is where you've got a basic four-man rush. Gilbert has to win that. He's got to step up and deliver that ball, pitch and catch to give him a manageable third and one. I think you're seeing the effects that pressure can have on a young quarterback, not always trusting the pocket. And, and you know what? And changing looks. There was a fire zone the previous play. Nose guard dropped in in the middle of the field. So maybe he's looking, trying to figure out what's going on up front rather than his receiver. Watch the edges of the AM defense. Demontre Moore, Von Miller both in there. Miller got back there. Miller knocked the ball away from Gilbert. Gilbert was able to jump on it. Two big time talented rushers coming hard, and Miller got there first. In third down situations, this Texas AM defense likes to put Von Miller right on the outside, and you see it's hard enough blocking him with only one player. He splits the double team. There has to be more of a presence from the running back there, Greg. Yeah. Whitaker's got to do more than just chip and, and run. He's got to deliver a blow that slows Von Miller down. He turned his body sideways and actually knifed. What a, what a player. Through that double play, yeah. Just, just understanding how teams are trying to block him. Been watching that matchup for a few plays, and poor Britt Mitchell. Is, he's overmatched at the moment by Miller. McNeil, who muffed the last punt, goes in there and catches one on the bounce. It was a dangerous play. Well, man, <laughs> the punt return is the most exciting play of the game. If you're an A, you're like, whoop. And Miller made the play on defense. Saturday night football continues with a game that'll be very important to Texas A&M if they can hang on to win. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State should the Sooners beat the Cowboys and A&M hang on here tonight. A&M would get a share of the Big 12 South title. Some's going, some are going to see Notre Dame and USC. Both games part of the Dr. Pepper rivalry series. Go to ESPN.com, search maps, see where you can find your game. Cyrus Gray. 
and short game picked up a couple. You know, we, we just a moment ago, we're talking about two years ago, Texas A&M being here. Mike Sherman said, I've got to develop and build an offensive line if I'm going to have any success. And this offensive line, what a, two true freshmen at the tackles, and they look great. Offensive line coach Jim Turner is Mike Sherman's cousin, and he's done an unbelievable job with this young group this year. Fuller. He had a touchdown catch earlier against the slam from Tannehill. Because you consider this, you have a true freshman playing left tackle, and you have a true freshman playing right tackle. Nehemiah Hicks, your tight end, is also a true freshman. So each and every play, you'll have two true freshmen lined up beside each other. Certainly bodes well for the future for the Aggies, and the present's not too bad. Gray's got it again. Very patient run. Cyrus running inside. The 40 yard line. You're right, RD. I mean, patience right there. You can have patience when you have his kind of speed. You know, at, at the folks who don't have that speed, they hurry to get there. They have to. They're down 15 seconds and counting. Unlike you in the quarter. In our touch football game this morning. I mean, you had a burst about you. <laughs> you <could. laughs> hands. Back in the old high school days, you were a quarterback. <laughs> Glad you're on my team. That's sort of the reverse Tannehill. Put me in receiver. Keep me away from the ball. It's a package deal with Reese and his son. <laughs> and his daughter Elizabeth was cheering. Texas trying to become bowl eligible. They're down 10, headed to the fourth. Tomorrow, Rockets, Bobcats, and Warriors, Grizzlies on ESPN2. It's the last one. Yeah, well, I got here first. I saw it first. Well, I touched it first. It's mine. Uh, it's for my son! Getting the hottest new video games doesn't have to be such a struggle. Oh, man. GameStop has them guaranteed in stock, including many from EA, like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit for $10 off. Joy to the players. Rated E to M. Hey, uh, Marty? Sorry, did you just text me that my house is an eyesore? It's okay. I switched to Sprint 6999 plan, so I get unlimited text. This email says it's ho ho horrendous. Email and web are unlimited, too. Why won't you look me in the eye, Marty? I just pulled up your holiday e-card. The sweaters. <laughs> unlimited text, web, and calling to any mobile for just $69.99 a month. Now by the new BlackBerry style. Only from Sprint, the Now Network. Enterprise, hi, I'm at the repair shop. I need to rent a car. Enterprise will arrange to pick you up. This is great. Drive you to our place and get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. American innovation meets Mexican styling. Taco Bell's totally redesigned chicken enchilada. Tender marinated all-white meat chicken, slow-simmered enchilada sauce, and melty cheese wrapped up and grilled to go. Only at Taco Bell. A legendary assassin. I must go, or you will all be in danger. Betrayed by his clan. Fellas like you and me, we don't run. Ninjas. Damn. The Warrior's Way. Rated R. Starts December 3rd. They say we're young and we don't know We won't find out until we grow Well, I don't know if all that's true Cause you got me and baby, I got you Now more than ever, you are each other's greatest strength baby. The Everlon Diamond Knot Collection The strength of love forged in a knot the unbeaten Ducks and Broncos face huge must-win games in the chase to play for the national championship. Arizona, Oregon at 7 and Boise State, Nevada at 10-15. Tomorrow on ESPN, college football lives here. It's the choice of Ironmen, of Olympians, professional athletes, and these guys. Be a pro snacker with a handful of heart-healthy California almonds. To the fourth quarter here in Austin. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer, and Jen Brown with you. The Lone Star Showdown. The Horns 
And still holding the horns up, but on the scoreboard, they're down after a 17 point third quarter by Texas AM, fueled largely by Longhorn turnovers. The Aggies have it back in Texas territory. Tannehill threw into double coverage looking for Jeff Bull. You know, to put a, a bow on what you were just talking about earlier, Craig, what this Texas A&M team has to look forward to next season. Last year, they had to play 18 true freshmen. It was the most they've ever played in school history. They're only going to lose five starters from this team next year. In fact, only six of the 44 players in the 2D roster are seniors. And this turnaround would not have been possible if Gerard Johnson hadn't taken it like a 100% great team player when Ryan Tannehill took his job. Third and five. Tannehill in a bunch of trouble. Firing it, looking for Wachakoon. He threw it out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. There is a flag down on the play. Could have had a lineman down the field on that one. It's got Novak, our referee in the white hat. He'll sort it all out. There is no foul for an eligible player illegally downfield. Fourth down. Then, then why'd you throw it? <laughs> <laughs> there is Gerard Johnson. And, you know, we, we got a chance to talk to Gerard earlier in the season before he lost his starting quarterback job. And we were all really, really impressed with him as a young man. He's... He's been a great leader, great ambassador, and a great friend to Ryan Tannehill. It was a tough situation for both guys. And a great player. He holds 24 Question. school records. But he's been big for Ryan Tannehill. He's been a, another set of eyes on the sidelines for him. He's been a confidant. He's been the real deal. Ken Wood puts it up high. Aggies have it surrounded. They'll touch it down at about the seven-yard line. All over the place on special teams tonight. Kenny Brown, he was the one there then. Johnson and Tannehill's team, they're up by 10, trying to knock off the Longhorns. Long before a Cummins diesel engine powered a Ram truck, it roared to life out here and proved itself here, here, and here. And is only available in a pickup under here. The Ram five year, 100,000 mile warranty covers you everywhere. Ram. It's an easy way. It's an easy way. Make a fresh, fresh start. It's an easy day. It's an easy life. It's a fresh start. You've a good sense. together at last the world's first hd tv powered by google tv available at sony style and best buy consider door busters at joseph a bank first camel hair blazers 99 dollars and wool cashmere dress pants 39 dollars we're opening early at six on friday with all executive leather jackets 129 and executive cashmere sweaters $59 Friday until 1 at Joseph A. Bank. I'm a hot babe out jogging. You're checking out my awesome headband. That's when you find out. Your cut rate insurance, it ain't paying for this. So get Allstate. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. This is the jungle. Disguised as a wedding, but a jungle nonetheless. And here there are two types of tigers. One who goes straight to the prize. And the one who gets the prize to come to him. Longhorns down 10, coming off a season in which they finished second in the country. Nobody saw this type of slide coming. In fact, if you finished first or second in the AP poll, no team since Arizona State in 1975 has finished with a losing record. Cody Johnson getting a first down and getting up to about the 20. And if the Longhorns don't come back in the final 14 minutes and 30 seconds here, 
they will join that list and, and no one frankly saw this coming in the offseason. Mac Brown we asked him yesterday what's your favorite part of coaching and he said fourth quarter comebacks. This team has had 13 fourth quarter comebacks since he took over in 1998. Let's see if they have any magic left. Johnson. A lot of room for the big fella. He's going to look up Hunter and drive on him. He gets inside the 40 and the horns are on the move. A little life with a 43-yard run by Cody Johnson. Almost twice as long as his previous long run of the season. Greg Davis seemed to have found something on the right side of his offensive line that was working. Poor angle by the safety coming up. By the corner, Cody Correll Judy. And it opened up a big gaping hole. Greg Davis told us that in the future, he wants to revert back to a more traditional running offense. Big, powerful running backs, quarterback under center, running downhill. That's maybe a little glimpse of what Greg Davis wants this offense to get back to. But he also made the comment, too, that, you know, you, you go with the offense, the personnel that you have, like we had the eye when we had Ricky Williams. So he's got to find who he's got. And that was Stephen Campbell, who's down in the play. Campbell has an injured foot, and they appeared to be working on that foot, a foot that earlier this year the Aggies thought might end his season. I mean, he's recovered well enough. His game obviously important to all of the kids from Texas. Steven is from Houston, wanted to give it a go tonight, and played pretty well, having a little trouble and walking his way to the sideline now. I think going back to the running backs real quick, guys, I think fans here in Texas, I think the coaching staff has been spoiled in years past. When you run down the list and look at guys like Priest Holmes, Ricky Williams, Cedric Benson, Jamal Charles, you just expect to have big time guys year in, year out. They haven't necessarily had the success at running back this year in a committee uh, approach. Play fake to Johnson. Gilbert almost had it stripped out of there. Garrett's going to have to run. Gilbert took a shot. Von Miller applying the pressure again. I think this was a good no throw. I mean, he thought he saw what he had coming open, and the safety went back deep and just at the last second decided not to let the ball go. Look how fast Von Miller gets off of blocks with the speed. He's a guy that in the first game of the year had an ankle injury that really slowed him down the first four games, but he's he's gotten healthy the second half of the year. Unblockable. And Gilbert, down he goes. There he is, Von Miller. Those first four games, Jesse, he had no sacks. You see number 40 coming. Very good job of cleaning it up and getting there. You know who I put him out? Eddie Brown, number 19. Took up two blockers. He's got freakish speed and freakish strength. Offenses this year that have decided they want to throw the football downfield have run into a lot of problems because you cannot block him with only one player, even if it's a tackle. And Texas didn't come close to picking up that stun as Miller made his move to the inside. This time Gilbert to get rid of it before Vaughn can get back there. Sean Porter made the stop. A very promising drive by Texas is now looking at fourth and long from the AM 42. Okay, so you look at character of a defensive unit once they've had a couple of big plays hit on them, right? Yeah. Coming off the five yard line, they have an explosive play here and there, and then they bow their necks. They're believing in themselves. They made big plays against Oklahoma. They had three goal line stands. They made huge plays last week against Nebraska. This is why fans in College Station are starting to talk about the new wrecking crew. They're as advertised. You see it right before your eyes. Tucker. You try to pin AM back deep. Kendrick McNeil gets away from it. Texas trying to get it down. Let's see if they're going to give him the spot. Now they're calling the touchback now. Got to keep the ball from breaking the plane of the goal line. Malcolm Williams was down there. Apparently couldn't keep it out of the end zone for, for Texas. So the Aggies will get it back and they'll start on their own 20 yard line. Texas running out of time trying to become bowl eligible and down by 10. 
Come see what's cooking at Applebee's. New flavor-loaded steaks. We start with America's best-selling flame-grilled steak. Then we load it up with fresh ingredients and savory flavors, like the Steakhouse Classic with Applebee's signature sauce. Best of all, they start at just $9.99. There's also our Bourbon Street Steak with blackened shrimp, the Napa Valley Cabernet and Portobello's, and more. Applebee's new flavor-loaded steaks starting at $9.99. There's no place like the neighborhood. This holiday season, buy $50 in Applebee's gift cards and get a $10 bonus card free. Long before a Hemi engine powered a Ram truck, it was born up here, tested down here, and proven beyond a doubt out here, and is only available in a pickup under here. A Ram five-year, 100,000-mile warranty covers you everywhere. Ram. Do you want to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronix Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronix Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer, and are reporting on my credit. If you have an active checking account and can afford low, flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronix Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. My flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget, and my kids are getting ahead in school. I've started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. ESPN's College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Try Applebee's new flavor-loaded steaks. Come see what's cooking today. And in part by Ram Trucks. Designed, tested, and proven to be the best trucks we've ever built. Ram. Well, Bevo's here at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. His spot down in the corner of Jamail Field. And he has... 11 minutes and 39 seconds to try to will his Longhorns to a comeback. AM trying to win for the ninth time this year, up 24 14. Ryan Tannehill. That play went for a touchdown earlier tonight. This time, Texas has a stop. You know, guys, we've talked about the turnaround for Texas AM after being 3 and 3 and attributed a lot of it to the change to Ryan Tannehill at quarterback, and certainly he deserves some credit. But after that third loss against Missouri, you see the Aggies lining up. Tannehill throwing it out in the flat, incomplete. He's looking for Michael Lamont. They lost to Missouri and looked just horrible doing it. So Sherman told his team, we're going to bounce back. And a couple of the players after we thought, yeah, we've heard this one before. But he brought out a trash can, put the game tape, put the game plan in it, and set it on fire and said, we're done with this. And since then, the Aggies haven't lost. Third and nine. Tannehill throwing for slope. He had to fight for it. And it goes down to the ground. It was Kenny Vaccaro on the coverage, and it'll be three and out for the Aggies. Longhorns to get another chance. Great coverage yet again from this Texas secondary. That time, Kenny Vaccaro lined up on Ryan Swope in the slot. Swope does such a good job working the middle of the field, but Vaccaro stays in his back pocket, contests the throw. And this Texas defense had to stand up and make a stop right there. This was a must stop for Will Muschamp's defense. Ken Wood is the punter. Deep to return for Texas is Adrian Phillips. Pressure coming. They got it. Carrington Bindham, the freshman. It all starts with a snap. You have to get it off in two seconds or less. That was 2.23. You have two people who come from the outside of the wall in front of the punter, and that's just too much time. Getting the ball pretty, getting it just right. 2-2-3 two, two, is too slow. It's the second big play tonight Bindham has made on special teams. That's now the 52nd block kick 
under Mac Brown here at Texas. It's the second most in the country since he took over back in 1998. How perfect execution was that block? Take it off the punter's foot. Give your offense the football back inside the 10-yard line. Get back in this game. Remember, Wood had only punted four times coming into the night, and Texas has a false start. Number 72, five-yard penalty. First stop. That, that kind of play right there is why Mac Brown says he doesn't go to bed till like 3 in the morning or wakes up at 3 if he happens to fall asleep. The little things, the inconsistencies that have plagued this team throughout the season. And again, this team has been very poor on sudden change opportunities this year when they've had a short field. They have not been able to capitalize with touchdowns. Odie Johnson. On the end of the pile and pick up a couple. Remember, this is a goal to go situation after the block punt by Bindham. Jesse, you mentioned this stat earlier and it bears repeating. In scoring drives of 39 yards or less, Texas has had 13 scoring drives. Ten of those drives have been field goals. Done can't, much better from deeper in the field, longer drives. Can't happen. Good teams capitalize when they have a short field. You don't capitalize by kicking field goals, you capitalize by scoring touchdowns, making the opponent pay. I go back to this. If Jordan Shipley or someone like him is on the field, you have a lot more success in the red zone. Gilbert. Whitaker. Von Miller this time not pressuring. Instead in coverage, he gets Whitaker down inside the 10. It'll be third and goal. We talked about Whitaker battling through some injuries here now in the last couple of weeks. He had a bit of a stinger problem heading into this game it's what it looks like there too oh. at least he's reacting and, and if you've ever had way. one before mm. I mean th this those hurt I think I had one yesterday working out <laughs> with Matt Dark a total body stinger <laughs> this is a big